Third 602. Um, and we do have to read a clause for, uh, for the Zoom meetings. And it's the meeting will be recorded, <clears throat> excuse me, and may air live. All attendees are muted upon entry. The host will unmute guests during the presentation, hearing, or citizen comment agenda item. Questions during the meeting can be submitted in the chat area to be addressed by the chair. Attendees not adhering to these guidelines may be put on hold or removed from the, uh, removed by the host. Okay, that's just a little, just what we have to do just for the, the Zoom meetings to make people aware that they are being, being taped. Okay, um, first on the agenda is public comment. So if we have any public comment. Okay, hearing none. What I'm going to do first, um, because I'm sure we'll, we'll have a lot of discussion. What I'm going to do first is just give the process procedure of the meeting tonight. Um, first off, I, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank everybody, CPC members, Anna, Josh, um, the Central Square Congregational Church Committee, everybody has put their heart and soul into our, this application um, and working it through. So thank you from me. Um, okay, first, I just want to say that for our last meeting, Community Preservation Committee members did submit to Anna um, and she compiled together um, the individual members' thoughts, what, again, as we had talked about at the last meeting, what they thought was um, fundable by using CPA funds um, and also what they would recommend um, and what they felt comfortable um, in recommending to be to be granted um, to be recommended to the town council or to grant to the the church. Um, the actual procedures of the meeting. There's two ways that we can proceed, um, and I'll entertain a motion for. The first is we can put a monetary cap that we recommend spending, uh, that we recommend recommending to the, the council, or I should say approve recommending um, for the historic aspects of the application. Um, once we decide on a monetary cap, we'll then decide what segment or element of the application it could go towards. The second possibility for a motion is to decide which elements are to be funded and then how much money should go towards them. Um, what we need to keep in mind, um, and I, want, I can't stress enough, is that we have to keep in mind we do not want to, to violate step two of the three-point test about substantial aid. Um, there's always that, that risk for that um, and given to our religious organization. So we have to keep that in mind. Anna has put together um, a couple slides for the acting case, what was spent and decided upon, plus the past Bridgewater grants that were given to, I believe the only other church in town that we've given CPA funds to is Unitarian Church. Um, we've had Gina, two churches. Gina, Gina could I interrupt um, for a moment? Did you want to have a, a vote on how we're going to proceed first? Do you want to go through all the rules? I just want to go through the procedure that we'll have a, a vote for it. Thank you. Um, yep. The, the last thing is, um, as I was saying, Anna has prepared a couple slides for the acting case and the past Bridgewater grants. They have been two churches in town that have been interested in grants, but they didn't meet the, the three point test. Um, so for uh, then, you know, will she'll present her slides and summarize her, her memo. Uh, discussion will take place after the discussion. Um, CPC members will privately 
message Anna um, their recommendations with the dollar amount. Uh, they have to put a proposed amount in that. She will put them together um, and come back and report them to us. Um, then I'll entertain a motion. We'll have further <clears throat> discussion and, and um, vote on it. Um, if any CPC members do not know how to private message to Anna, just let me know or address it. We can just explain it quickly for you. Um, so any questions first on the procedure, how the meeting will go? Tina, I do you have a quick question. For the members that are on uh, using the phone, how, how do they get their message to Anna? Uh, Why don't you just email me? Can they, do they, if, do they have access to email? I think that would probably be. I think Harry and uh, William Smith are on the telephone right now. I just wanted to, um, let you guys know who was on the phone. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Yep, go ahead, Anna. I'm sorry. So Harry and Bill, do you, can you just email me then um, when we're voting? Did, would that work for both of you? Both of you are muted, so we can't hear you. Okay, Josh, can you unmute them, please? Yeah, I can request that they unmute themselves. Okay. I don't. They have to allow it. There you go. Do you know while he's doing that, I wanted to make one correction. You stated sure. two. There were four. We've received the QCPC over time has received, I believe, four applications from churches. One was Correct. funded twice, and another one uh, we have before us, and two decided not to go forward. I don't think the CPC took a vote because it was pre uh, the Acton Church uh, SJC activity. So they, I think they just decided to stop pursuing it. Oh, okay. It Thank you. Thank you for the correction. I, I think it, was, it was because of the cost of the preservation restriction uh, to get that okay. in place. Okay. I know one, they decided not to go through. Um, the other one was before my time on CPC. Um, and I was thinking it hadn't been approved, but maybe they just didn't go through with it. So I trust yeah. you on that one, but thank they're, you for, they're, for, they're for pre clarifying. They were pre-8, I'll get it right. They were pre-2018. Okay. Had a, if it was the St. Thomas Aquinas one, that was like way pre-2018. That could, that could be five churches. Eh? Yeah. Okay. Because I know St. Thomas put one in. This is the one that I thought wasn't approved, but I could be wrong on that. Um, okay. Do we have an answer from Bill or Harry? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bill and Harry able to email Anna? Yes. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, no, this is Gina. This is Jennifer Burke. I just had a quick question. I was I was listening, but I was doing work while I was listening, so I may have missed your explanation. Why are we sending private votes during a public meeting? We this is an open public meeting, and we should be taking votes in public. That's well. We're not actually taking the vote. the The vote will be in public. It was just all the thoughts in the end. It was going to. I guess they wouldn't have to be private message to her. Um, she was just going to take, instead of everybody verbally saying, yeah, I think this and I think this and I think this, we were going to message her. She was gonna compile them and just read down the list. Okay. So okay. you're right. I just, I, I just get concerned that if people are sending private emails during a public meeting, that, that could be misconstrued. So, okay. My only concern. Point of order there. Yes, when, when this gets recorded, are the uh, messaging and chat things recorded as part of this? Yes, the chat chat is recorded, but private emails would not be. Yeah, oh, I see. I, I see the difference now. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I think we, have to then, we, I think we then have to, to uh, because we can't all do the submission of what we think the private, the uh, 
pro, uh, the recommendation might be money wise. I think we're just going to have to keep it all in public. Okay. Do we want to still message Anna like publicly in chat or just verbally say what we think and she can just I think we it. have to say it I think we have to say it verbally because two individuals will be going through a private uh, email and I don't want to get into an open meeting law violation. That, I've already that's had true. Potentially that's one. True. That's true. We we've been doing good on CPC. We don't want we don't like violations. Um, thank you, Jennifer, for for pointing that out to us. Um, okay. Um, do we want a motion first on which way we want to proceed? I move that we take the second place where we will discuss what we would apply any monies to and secondly discuss the amount if we all determine that to be uh, the, the element I will use uh, acceptable. Okay, do we have a second for that? Second by Harry. Okay, if you give a second, uh, was that Harry that did a second? Yes. Okay, just if you do a second, just say your name or a motion to say your name, choose just for us. Okay, we have a, a motion to take the, the second procedure uh, to decide the elements to be funded. And then once that decide, is decided, how much money should go towards those elements. Uh, I, I made that motion to ensure that we actually had a discussion about the eligible elements uh, up front and before we decided what the cost was because there's quite a different range depending on elements. So I thought we should focus on the element first. Okay, good. Um, discussion on that? Any discussion? Um, okay, I, I agree. I, I could actually see both ways and I would entertain the motion um, either way, but I think as, as Carlton said, that's, it's a good way because when I read through the application um, and have read through it many times in the, the price sheet, there's um, things in there that I think are definitely um, not eligible for CPA funds. So I think it's good that we are deciding which elements and then how to go from there. Um, I think myself, um, and this might might help a little for for our dis discussion. Barbara provided to me um, a list of the different segments that we had identified from what the Gina. Gina the, we have yes. to talk about the motion only right now. Well, this kind of. Okay, as part of the discussion, it's their, their prioritized list. If we choose as a committee to go forward with the elements, then we can okay. have that prioritized list. Okay. I got it. Okay. Thank um, you. Okay, thank you. Uh, discussion on following that, that line for procedure for the motion. Any other CPC members want to jump in? Okay. Barbara? <laughs> no, CPC is on a motion. We're, I call a question so we can move it forward. Okay. If there's no discussion, I'll, I'll call for a roll call vote on Calton's motion. Gina? Yes. Carlton? Yes. Dean? Yes. Uh, uh, actually, I have Dean. Um, oh, Gina? Yeah. Dean? Yep, you'll have to unmute yourself. Yes. Thank you. Steve? Yes. Harry? Yes. Bill? 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 
Did we get Bill? Uh, did we lose Bill? Uh, no, we didn't get Bill, but we have five votes right now. Five out of six. Okay. Okay, Bill's not muted, so. Let the record show that he did not respond. Okay. Okay. Right, the motion was approved. Okay. Um, okay, next, um, and Carlton, correct me if I'm, oops, I just said the wrong thing on here. Um, no, I, I, no I we, think that, we, go we ahead. Just, we discussed people's thoughts on what they want to apply the money towards. Yeah, and I'm, I'm more than happy to have the uh, prioritized uh, list read. Uh, I, I have some pencil here, so I'll make a note, but I okay, sure. have the list. Okay, Josh, can you put that, that screen up for me, please? The one I, the prioritized list. And Barbara, thank you for getting me that. Okay, you can punch it out for a bigger. Um, okay, as Barbara had written, it was explained to her by the architects and several of the engineers that you start from the top and work down for priorities. Um, Josh, we lost that sheet. I think he had to pull it down so he could expand the text. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay, so their, their list of priorities is the steeple, the roof, chimneys, windows and doors, siding, gutters, and any miscellaneous work that goes with the, the steps. Okay. Um, Gina, so it's an order of priority? Yes. That's, that's your priority that um, Barbara submitted on behalf of the church. Okay, we'll open. So, so, so record, it's steeple, first, roof, chimneys, windows and doors, siding, gutters, and miscellaneous work that goes with each step. Correct. Okay, um, thank you, Barbara, again, for submitting that. Um, okay, Anna, do you want to, is this a spot for you to talk about the acting case? Uh, do you want me to talk about the acting case or do you want me to give a summary of what uh, people's responses were? Um, in the memo okay, um, how about both? Yeah. Response, responses, summary first, and then the Afton case in the UU church. And Josh can put those slides up too if you want, or if you can share them. Uh, can I just? Yeah. Oh. No, I'm just looking down at participants. Can I just ask the person that it just says iPhone? That's Who that Barbara. Is? That's Barbara. Oh, okay. Barbara. Sorry. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, Anna, go ahead. Um, so we had four responses from uh, TPC members and I'll just go through and kind of give the highlights of, of the responses. And I'll just walk through the conclusions pretty much. Uh, what said. Um, so members agreed that uh, landscape restoration and storm window replacement should not be funded with CPA funds. Most responses also agreed that uh, associated costs with any of the vinyl windows and gutters and downspout costs should be excluded from CPA funding. Um, all of the responses said that they would consider chimney repairs be funded with CPA funds. Um, and there was mixed opinion on the top priority or need for the church and responses sort of included structural repairs, the steeple, and restoration of the original siding. 
and the total funding packages range between under 200,000 up to almost the, the full amount. Um, the median amount between all four responses was around 20, uh, 250,000. So that's kind of the overview of everyone's responses. I would say overall, there was not a consensus really though amongst the four responses. So I'm gonna share my screen. So there was some clear things that we, the, the folks that submitted said we should not fund. There were some clear elements that we, it's not historical preservation, yes. correct? Yes, the clear ones that people, everyone said they did not want to fund was landscape restoration and storm water or storm window replacement. And most, okay. meaning three out of four agreed that vinyl window costs, gutter and downspout costs should also be excluded. And that's probably because they, they are not historic downspouts and that kind of thing? <laughs> was the, the concern from the responses. The right, and my, my thought on that too was for downspouts, to me that's more of a maintenance thing. It, I can't imagine downspouts being historic. I might be wrong on that, but, but I thought that was more of a maintenance. But, but if they were some period of time that there were downspouts that were some kind of wooden constru construct, True. Then, True. then it might be, but, but I think we don't know that information. Right. right. So moving along, um, I pulled together the funding kind of precedents for the, what Bridgewater has funded for the churches in the past that have gone through. I didn't include the projects that did not, the church and other religious organization projects in Bridgewater that didn't. And then I pulled the three kind of relevant case, uh, projects that were discussed around the acting case. Um, so two, fun, two different projects that were funded for the acting congregational church. And the South Acton Congregational Church, the roof repairs um, that they had in the process when the uh, Acton case was first brought forward, and then they withdrew their application. But I included it here for reference also. So, so, that, the, so that's the stained glass window one, is that correct? That the, it was not funded, the, right? No, none of these were funded. The two uh, projects that were in consideration during the Acton case were these two projects that were funded that were uh, in relation to the Acton Congregational Church. One was around 50000 for stained glass windows, and the other was just under 50000 for a master plan for building preservation. So the total for both projects was just about 100000 But my point is that the stained glass window was denied because of the SGC ruling. Yeah. Correct. For reference, the two Bridgewater projects um, for the First Parish Unitarian Universalist Church there was one project for 42,000 about for siding and chimney restoration, and a second project for 27,000 for the exterior doors and shutters restoration, which was a total of about $70,000 between the two projects. Thank you, Anna. Questions on, on that or discussion on those slides? Okay, hearing, hearing none. Um, I would just say, I'm just going to add something. I did a quick, in the last half hour, I did a quick review, and it was very incomplete, that before 2018, there were a large number of church projects that were, in fact, listed in the uh, coalition. And that all predated the SJC ruling, and I didn't have time to actually look and see what may or may not have been funded or, or asked for or denied. Uh, uh, after 2018 SJC ruling. Okay, thank you, good. Good, thank you so much for looking that up. Bill Smith, you had um, sent out something on churches that had been uh, research you had, you had found. Were those also before 2018? Do you know years of those? Bill Smith? Okay. I think he disappeared. He was, he actually didn't, didn't vote either. So, okay. Um, He's muted right now. 
Yeah, there's people that are muted in there. Right, but he's not. Bill, can you unmute yourself? Are you there? Yeah, Josh, are you able to unmute somebody? Um, no, I mean. No, he's unmuted. Okay, Bill Smith. Bill, are you there? Okay, my question to Bill, he had, he had done some later research too on other churches that were funded. Um, and he said there are a number of, uh, including a couple in Boston, um, my thought is that it was all before the 2018 ruling as well. Um, I don't think he gave us dates on them. I think it was just the, the churches. But again, as Carlton said, the ones he saw, and they probably may have looked at the same site that it was before our Supreme Court. Um, Anna, do you, know when, do you know when Anna became a CP state community in Boston? I didn't think it was that long ago. What was the question, Carlson? You cut off the beginning. Um, yeah, it's, do you know when Boston became? Do you know when Boston became? It was 2019. Okay, thank you. 2019. Can you hear me now? I've got two things going. Oh my gosh. Yep, there's a lot of feedback here, though. Herb. Can, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Finally. And I've I, been here I, I, the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I've called okay. my son for SOS here. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was in 2019, and one of the projects involved restoring stained glass windows in one of those church, I think it was Beacon Hill or Back Bay, one of those. Um, and they were for millions of dollars millions of dollars. I was very surprised. And it was their, their budget is $34 million in Boston annually. There's C, <laughs> CP, CPA budget? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that kind of, um, that we bypasses our since probably the inception of it. Um, I actually just pulled up your email and I do see that it says 2019. Yeah, and I'm sorry I've had such technical problems. That that's quite all right. Um, I, I'm I'm using the phone and the the uh, laptop, and I've muted the laptop, so uh, maybe. Yeah, because that causes. I can work this echo. out. Yeah, yeah so was, I, and I I do apologize for that. I and I did I did want to vote in favor of uh, Carlton's motion. By the way. <laughs> oh okay. Um, <laughs> thank you. Not that thank that you. makes any difference at this point. Right, but that, but thank you thank you for. Adding that in, um, Gina, Jean, to Bill, that stained glass windows in Boston were they approved? Yes. Oh. Well, oh, I'm a, actually looking. I'm actually looking at a site right now, and it, uh, it's an article that is dated May twentieth, two thousand twenty. Park and playground and steeple dot among dot projects to get CPA help. I just, and then go ahead, Bill. No, no, that's not me. So that those, was Steve. Those things, Steve. That's, that's Steve. I just shared that. That, uh, that go ahead, but I, I just shared that to the group chat. That, that's what I got. I took that and clicked on it, and this came up. Yep, that, uh, I shared that to the chat. So the twenty-four million dollars was for many different things in Boston. The largest sum, eight hundred thousand, is directed towards construction of a new park. The second church in Dorchester, built in 1806, will get 400000 to restore its steeple, which has been in worsening condition for decades. Yep. The, and, okay, and I'm going to read the rest of these so we have some dollars in mind. Okay, yeah, that's better. a good idea. First Parish Church on Dorchester Meeting Hill uh, to restore its steeple over the last decade will get 20000 of CPA money. Uh, there are other money to support affordable housing, historic preservation, uh, creation of preservation, recreational use. So basically, not, without reading the whole thing, it's, it ranges between 20,000 and 400,000 for a couple of churches. And that was this uh, May 5th of this year. Wow. 
Okay, now I, the source that I had was for 2019. They mentioned the Old West Church at Beacon Hill, the First Baptist Church at Back Bay, and St. Luke's Church uh, at St. James Episcopal Church in Roxbury. And they mentioned specifically the stained glass windows, but I don't have the amount. Just the overall amount was given, the 34 million, and 16 million for some open space project, I think. But Bill, it, was it, wasn't, there, it wasn't broken down. Was that, 30, was that 34 million total for all those churches or? Well, it was, that's their, the budget. That is the CPC uh, budget in Boston. Oh, okay. So that's not necessarily what was awarded for each church. Uh, no, but it implied that it was a lot of money, but I don't know specifically how much. Uh, right. They just mentioned uh, the, the, wow. the mayor was very enthusiastic about those three churches because I guess they're very important uh, mm -hmm. architecturally and so forth. Right. My my thought to, uh, for these churches being the uh, stained glass window being approved in 2019 was, was that it didn't it didn't um, depict a religious picture. That possibly me, possibly yeah that's the uh, what I understand is the criteria, you know, somebody can jump in if I'm, if I'm saying it wrong, but the way I understand it, the criteria for stained glass windows is if it depicts anything religion, religious, it can't be considered. Hmm. This is, this is Jennifer Burke again. Um, what is the source of your material? Because I'm on the Community Preservation Coalition's website where they have a database of all CPC projects in the Commonwealth. And I've searched Boston Churches Historic and in 2019 they did fund several churches but there are no stained glass components. It's mostly repair of masonry or structural components. One of them was a conversion to affordable units. Um, there's no stained glass at all here. Okay. okay. Um, I read several different articles and one, maybe I don't guess this could have been the Braintree Church. Braintree received a pretty substantial allocation to a church in Braintree recently. Uh, but anyway. Thanks for looking that up, Jennifer. I, I uh, tried to get that and I didn't, couldn't figure out how to call down whatever number of projects came up. Yeah, you guys are quicker than me on it. I have the iPad and uh, the laptop here, like what, you know, to look them up. But thank you for... for um, so the takeaway for me on the data that's based on that article I just read and what Jennifer just told us, you know, the takeaway for me is, is that there have been since that uh, SJC ruling, some churches that have received funding for things like a steeple repair um, and windows, that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, Carlton, I was part of those that uh, projects up. since 2018 have been for masonry and roofing and all exterior repairs. Okay. Okay. Thank say you. That again. Say it again because you kind of broke up. So I would say the majority, there absolutely have been projects that have been funded since 2018 for religious organizations. So the majority of the projects have been funded for masonry, roofing, and other ex exterior repairs. Thank you. Okay. Which is what we're doing. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just add in uh, just to Bill's point about the stained glass. I looked at brain trees and I didn't see anything about stained glass there either. Most of it had to do with downspouts and gutters. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you, Anna. Um, you guys are quick looking that up. So, okay. so they did um, fund downspouts. I wonder if they were original downspouts or you know, copper have, or something like that. I think we have to assume that there was some kind of restoration or refurbishment because those are some of the words, allowable words in this kind of context. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Can 
can we ask Barbara or, or, or Gordon or whoever else is on the church? Um, I will also say just, I'm going to chime in for the last time. Both yeah. Ranger projects were funded prior to 2018. They were funded in 2011. Oh, okay, and that was the one with the downspouts and? So it was prior to the SJC. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's good to know. Um, okay, anything else on prior funded CPA projects? Just as a, a reference for, for us in our discussion tonight. Okay. Um, my thought is, and the way I submitted my my thoughts to uh, for Anna's compilation was that we concentrate on the steeple. Um, it turns, which was their phase one, and it turns out that that's uh, the top on their priority too. Um, it appears to be. In my opinion, it appears to be the most historic part of the church. Um, again, we have to look at look at steeples, and is there anything to the steeple that makes it a religious element? Um, I think the church had, and I, I see Rachel shaking her head now. It doesn't have um, a cross on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, to me, and my thinking, as I think I explained to you folks when you first came in, um, and I'll say it again because we're, we're now taped and have a different group of people here. Um, to me, a steeple has always represented a church. Um, whether there's a cross on it or not, you see a steeple, it usually means there's a church underneath it. Um, and I know you, you folks um, from the church did give the rationale why it's not religious and the historic significance of that. Um, so in light of that, that would be my suggestion to start with the steeple and go from there. Um, and as Barbara said, you know, just work down. Uh, that would be my thought. Um, what, did I I guess, have, what did we say? What was the, I can't remember, I'm sorry. Jana, what was the, uh, thoughts in terms of our input that you summarize uh, for the steeple? Okay. Well, Anna, do you have, I'm trying to look down on the, the Anna's, paper. Anna's muted. Okay. Anna, you muted. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, we can't have Anna muted. <laughs> Um, I would say of the four responses, two call, said that they would feel comfortable funding steeples. Okay. okay. And the other two didn't mention it or, or said they wouldn't? I can tell you, okay, the break, I'll just read what the breakdown is. Okay. One response said they would fund basically everything. So mm -hmm. the second response said they would, uh, they mostly wanted to focus funding on structural repairs, um, including repair to the chimney and restoration of the windows and other structural repairs. Another response said that they wanted to focus <coughs> on the um, and you guess now who said that. Um, and another response said they wanted to focus mostly on um, restoration of the original siding and repairs to the chimney. Okay, thank you. Thank you. But Does neither answer do not want to fund the steeple, if that makes sense. They, they just do not mention it, if that makes sense. They just okay. do not mention it. It wasn't called out, you're saying, as, as uh, the highest priority? Yes, but no one did not want to fund it. Okay, you... that was that was okay. my highest priority, was the steeple. Uh, and as I said, because to me, that was the church's phase one. Um, it's also their, their top priority. I think they might have, I'm not sure, sure if there were other things in phase one, but it was their phase one focus basically on the, the steeple. And again, to me, of most, a lot of the elements, that's one of the, the most historical pieces. Um, you know, do you want again, me to turn my screen again and I can pull up the, when we talk, uh, 
kind of like, I wrote, broke out a list basically that I think you ended up sending to the church uh, in terms of kind of the eight categories for like mm -hmm. segmenting kind of the funding. That way folks can kind of think about, okay, what are the really, what are the eight categories that we're really talking about or the eight elements of the project? Mm -hmm. So for um, Harry and Bill, who I think are still on the phone, the, it breaks down into the steeple, siding, chimney, windows, roof, interior, and then other, other costs. Is that in an order of priority? No, this is just in a, in a general order. If uh, oh, okay. Josh has the, from the, if you want to do it another way, Josh can reshare his screen with the list in priority from the church. And then you could vote on those priority items that they have listed out, which might be a, a quicker way. Right, good point. Um, do, we, do, do we have any idea what the requested amount is for each of these categories, gutters, siding, windows, chimneys? We, I mean, we it, do. We do, okay, we do. good. Yeah, and I think I sent, I think yeah. that was sent out, or not think it was sent out. Uh, I actually broke down because I had a spreadsheet that was phase two, phase phase one, phase two, and phase three. And because mm -hmm. I had that spreadsheet, I worked really hard and it was a PDF file and I converted it to an Excel spreadsheet. And under phase one, which is listed as a steeple, uh, there were things like mobilization. Uh, I'll, I'll read the things that there were equipment rentals. There were uh, things oh, like- I see that, intended. yep. Okay. And so I summed up, I summed up all of those costs and what I call likely eligible materials and labor. Uh, I came up with a number uh, that was about 63,000. And the likely overhead, what all, that's all the mobilization, the profit, the permitting costs, all that kind of stuff uh, came up to be about uh, 72,000. So those two things together came up to about 133,000. And then there's a bunch of stuff that I had just had questions about whether it was eligible or not. And I have to figure out from my spreadsheet what I've, what I've filtered on, here it is. So, so the ballpark that I was looking at started at a minimum of uh, something. I thought that we should go below that, but learning that there have been other instances of churches getting money since 2018 is that we might be able to uh, uh, go a little bit higher than my initial cost. But I'm trying to give you what I thought were realistic uh, costs. So if I summed up both the realistic eligible, which I the 63 and the 72, that's about 133. And then there's some other costs at about 200 and 222,000 for stuff that I thought were questionable. But I don't know how we can allocate a specific amount of money just for the steeple until we know what they project the steeple restoration cost to be. Well, I mean, so otherwise. That's what they projected. That is their money. That's right from their, uh, their uh, engineering firm. Okay, because I'm looking at the spreadsheet from Anna and I, I, can't see, I can't see how that was broken down like that. As I said, I have a broken down, it broken down because we had received another PDF from them that broke it down into phase one, phase two, and phase three. Right, right. and that's that where Anna, Anna had sent that out too. Um, had sent it out. I'm looking back, I know that Barbara sent me the, the breakdown. So, so the, my questionable stuff was like, do we pay for bonding insurance, the staging to get up there? You know, do we pay for police details? And by the way, if police details come from Bridgewater, are we uh, uh, do, supplanting the Bridgewater police? Uh, there's that kind of thing that's in the repair of the wooden soffits. Um, I really think that those are very historical personally, and, and, and that's in the roof. But so that's the kind of breakdown I did. and and. All I can do is give you the, the ballpark numbers here and let people, uh, and I'm gonna be quiet and let other people that know something more than I do talk. Okay, I can share, um, quick send it to Josh and he can share it, um, what 
David Shively from the church had prepared for like the individual elements, like how much for the roofing, how much the siding, how much for the steeple, um, if that helps. Um, but my, my question on that was when I did my summary, because there were things for the steeple that I, again, like Coutland, and I, I think there were diff some different ones from what, what he just mentioned, that I don't think could be included if CPA, uh, CPC recommended um, re restoration to the, or the steeple. The phase one, the way it was added up, and I didn't include the soft cross, which according to David Shively, he wasn't including the soft cross in it. I came up with a different figure than he did. So we might just want to clarify that. But would it help if I just shared that with for Josh and for him to to put it up? You can you can also share the screen if it's easier for you, Gina. Okay. Well it's part of an email, so let me just cut it and put it in a document. Um, okay, just hold on. Bear with me. I'm not as quick at these things as the others. Hold on. By the, by the way, the subtotal cost that I got based on the information I transcribed for the steeple phase alone was $400,000 and change. Did that include the staging? Because, I mean, if the staging's yes. not in, okay. Because if the staging's not in place, then they can't get access to the steeple. That's I, I understand that, but I was trying to figure out what the CPA could fund and avoid the substantial aid clause. Yeah, I understand that. Do, do we have a legal definition of substantial aid? Just for the record? Or some guidance from Anna or someone? Anna, if there's, no, if there's no set amount, Bill, in terms of what substantial is or is not. But I can pull up the legal definition from the SJC case. Um, but there, and if you're asking if there is a number that it says yes or this is substantial, no, it is not. That does not exist. Okay. It's going to be that's relevant to the I project. Pulled, that's part of why I pulled the uh, Acton amounts that were uh, deemed to be substantial as part of that. I see. Case. I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. I, I just have to open Zoom on the laptop because that's where I foolishly did the, the document. So just hold on. And that number I gave you a little over 400,000, that did not include the 15% contingency. Yeah. I didn't feel that we can be funding unknown. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that, actually. Okay. okay. Sorry. Okay. okay. So, so I can, I can share. Oh, right. you got to mute one, Gina. Oops. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> now I'm going to echo. Now I'm going to echo. Yeah. You have to mute one of them. One of them. Okay, I did. Let me. Is that me? Gina, mute the speakers on your laptop. And then once you do that, unmute yourself. I muted you. Okay. Um, I'm, but it's doing feedback, I think. We can hear you now. Yeah, you sound okay now. Yeah, it's not giving feedback. Okay, why isn't it letting me? Okay. 
Okay. Josh, I'm going to Thank you. Yep, Josh, I just sent it to you. If you can share it, that would be great. Oh. I usually share, th I've never shared from my laptop before. I've always shared from the, the iPad and it's not the same. So what I just sent to Josh is the breakdown that Barbara had forwarded me, the David Scheibel of the church had prepared just how much for the steeple, how much for the siding like that, just to break down. Um, and it didn't, didn't include the soft costs. Thanks, Josh. Okay, and where it says, as I mentioned, that was David's words. I just, I just cut and pasted from the email. Um, but that's showing 118,864 for the steeple. But that doesn't include the staging, which is under general. And, and Carlton's number did include the staging. Well, that's is, upper, an upper, upper number. Yeah, which increased Increased it to around 400, right, Carlton? Yeah, with the, it's two, 462. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know I had added up the steeple too. I actually came up a different price, but I think I left things out. Um, some other things. Um, the staging. Okay. This. The staging was 102,000, mm -hmm. if I'm following across right. So 102, that would bring it up to 220,000 count, not 400 and something thousand. But we're, we're looking at apples and oranges right now. Right, okay. Um, okay, so I guess we, before we decide how much we wanna to put towards it, we need to decide if everybody agrees on the steeple or thinks it, we should find other elements or segments first before the steeple. Um, I, think we should, I think personally, I think we should, uh, someone has, needs to make a motion with a dollar amount if, if we're gonna fund the steeple. And if people don't wanna fund the steeple, then they'll say no and we'll proceed. Yeah. Good, that's a good idea. Okay, <laughs> I, my thought is to, uh, and the committee could could disagree or in a, in a, a Jennifer can can give their input on it. My thought is to discuss the different elements and which one we want to want and a more we want to bring forth in the um, the the motion because that way they are when are doing one whole motion discussion. Um, if that doesn't pass to another one, my thought is to decide in this discussion, um, which was the motion to decide I which see. we, Colton's yeah, motion, I mean, if I remember it right, was to decide which elements we wanted to fund. So it included more than, more than one. It was identifying what we wanted to fund and then how much? All part of the same motion. So if we're under motion, we have to finish the motion. Right. So that's my interpretation of the motion. Um, is that we look at all the elements um, and decide which we want to fund. And then we decide on the dollar amount, right? Correct. After Correct. that. Okay. That's how I interpreted it as well. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, other, or any other thoughts, different segments or, or elements um, that CPC would like to see funded? Sure. 
should we go down the list and and say yeah, like yes or no to each element rather than saying asking what everyone wants? You should probably like, like take a vote on each element. Say like, do, do we want to do the the steeple? Then then. Okay, okay so that's that's kind of like what Calton just said. To to vote on one and the yeah. other. I my thought but, is but to not I don't about the money yet. Yeah, we're not talking money yet. We're just, just trying. If we if we go individually by element, I think that that's how I interpret it. That we would say, okay, these are the, like we'll we'll vote on the elements, and then then we can go come back and say, okay, these are the elements that we're going to be talking about. So, okay, so you're you're saying to vote on each element separately. Yes. Okay. For that's not the motion. Right. Um, the discussion right. and, and plus that if we that would affect how how my vote is because if we identify all these different what was I just thinking if we identify all the different things that it could be we say okay the steeple I don't know x number of dollars that okay whatever was next on the list um it could be if we vote x number of dollars for the steeple in my mind i have a set dollar limit um max to give to keeping in mind the substantial aid clause um i could possibly vote to put a conceivably vote to put all the money in the steeple but if the committee decides that they want something else. So I guess I'm just looking for the, like what was meant by the motion. Um, I think it said identify the elements and then decide which. So it's not identify one element as a steeple, take a vote on it, then do the next one. I think it was identify all of them? Is that what yeah, was meant? I agree with that. Like, I think, I think my my interpretation wasn't wasn't talk about like the steeple and then the money. I think it was just okay. Let's identify the elements. So, right, but it wasn't separate votes on each one. Right. Or are you saying separate votes, Steve? No, no, just to make sure that we we know what elements we want. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Uh, Okay, so we have the steeple was the first um, discussion or including it or not including it. Any questions on if it denotes our religious um, aspect to the church? Um, anything for that? Are we in agreement, agreement that it's not a religious component? I just, excuse me, I just want to say, is the steeple, does that house the bells? The bell. Mm -hmm. The yeah. bell is the historical thing in the church. Okay, good, that, thank my, you. My take on that structure, it has tremendous history for the town back when we didn't have all the fun communication tools we have now. Exactly. And that mm -hmm. was the bell. It was the ringing to call the fire department. Uh, I also believe that the uh, uh, mother vein on top does not have religious significance because it was used to let people know how the wind blew. Mm -hmm. You know, that was one of the better things that they had uh, to look at things. So my perspective on the steeple is while many churches reach to the sky, this particular one is in that form, but that form served the town. Well beyond, but well beyond a religious purpose. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Thank my you. Time. Thank you, Rachel and, and Carlton. Um, those are my thoughts too, but I just want it clear that yes, we don't think it has a religious connotation to it. Um, so you, just, you two just backed up what, what I was thinking. Um, so thank you for, for that. Um, I, I would like to, the record to show that we think the historic significance may overwhelm the religious significance. Mm -hmm. 
Sure. Correct. I agree. Um, as I said, my thought is definitely start with the steeple. Um, Let's talk I, about the roof. What was that? Let's talk about the roof. Okay. Was that their second choice? The second? Yep. Okay. Because I don't have the, the list up right in front of me. Okay. Roof. Turk. Colton. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll start. I don't think we're going to, I don't think we should be funding uh, repairs to asphalt shingles and that kind of thing, because unless they're taking those, that roof back to a uh, period certain, 1920, 1870, if you're taking it back to that, then it may be eligible. But if it's just taking care of the current damage to the, sh the asphalt shingles that I believe are up there, it's not slate, it's not metal. I think it's asphalt and it was probably done 20 years, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. so I don't consider that eligible. But I do believe that the chimney is listed under their, the phase two that I reviewed, the chimney is included in that. So I, looking at my spreadsheet here, hang on. So underneath that, I saw Lots of things that were questionable, uh, equipment rentals, but I understand that equipment has to be rented. Uh, so I was trying to separate out those kinds of costs. If we got to just, we could fund materials and, and labor for materials, that's it. But here's in the, here, oh, so the chimney was called out, repair and repoint the masonry chimney. The estimated price was 24,000 in materials and labor. Uh, and there was, but what I think is the flashing around the chimney is likely eligible, uh, and I think what I looked at was the repair of the wood soffits at the eaves, and I would prefer to re re use the word restoration because I think that's what we need to fund is restoration of the wood soffits. And after, after looking at the pictures uh, that were submitted as to us uh, supplementally, I really think that those have some historic uh, significance. So there was money in there for repairing those soffits. Uh, the fascia board uh, was not included, but I think it may have some issues. The rake boards uh, were, uh, well, the rake boards are in the steeple and the uh, paint flush, clabbered, belt course, and the paint fascia and soffits. I think those are very much eligible. And if, if you find that there are some of those are rotten, then what's the plan? Is the plan to make a mold out of ones that are solid and then replace them with some modern acceptable material? And that's what I was thinking about. And when I do that thought process, without giving you all the details and color coding that I did, uh, I find that the uh, cost for repairs were about 243000 total as, as proposed by this church. Uh, the phase two soft costs that they proposed totally came to about 296000 so that a total cost with contingency for that phase was uh, 444000 something like that. And that's, that's what I think is eligible is more on the order of uh, like 117000 I could be wrong. So what was your, you weren't including in that figure, you were including the chimney, right? You were just talking like the soffit. The the the, no, the chimney was listed in that, in their phase two. Correct. At 24,000. Correct. And if you talk about the roof, we need to talk about the chimney at the same time. Okay. In my opinion. Okay. Um, other discussion? Well, when we restored the academy building uh, and when it all came before the Historic District Commission, we knew that the cost to restore the, the roof to its original state, which was probably slate, was probably a million dollars or more. Um, I so. And so we decided to allow historically appropriate architectural shingles to be used on the roof of the academy building. 
So sometimes when you're in a restoration project, you, you, you can't go back to the absolute original and restore it the way we would like for it to be done. We have to use uh, elements which are historically appropriate or bear a certain similitude to the original. Um, and with the chimney, um, we, we approved that it be lowered. Um, it was much higher originally. And since it's not really used for any reason except decorative purposes, uh, again, that was going to be a really high uh, item, uh, ticket item the restoration of that really high chimney. And so we approved that it, based on the recommendation of the preservationists, uh, we approve that it be reduced in height. So you have to make accommodations uh, when you're dealing with historic restoration. Otherwise, the cost is just prohibitive. Like with the windows, we could insist that they use 19th century uh, ecclesiastical windows, uh, clear panes and so forth and so on. They are available. Again, cost prohibitive. So again, you've got to, you, you've got to give a little when you're in a restoration project like this. Uh, otherwise it won't be done and then the building will just will uh, fall into rack and ruin and that defeats the whole purpose. So all these elements are like judgment calls really. And as far as the roof goes, uh, I, don't, I don't see how they could possibly restore it to the original. And if we approve of uh, replacing the roof, as we did with the academy building, then we have to determine what kind of shingle would be uh, appropriate architecturally. I, they have to, I, we don't. Right, I yeah, understand right, what right. Right, I understand what you're saying, Bill. Um, you know, for uh, substitutions, for lack of a better word, like you said, the slate roof, or, or you know, architecturally, historically, architecturally. Um, it may be a compromise. It doesn't preclude right. being funded by CPA funds because right. you get into, you're restoring, you're restoring to the original, um, if you're using something else that wasn't the original. Um, right. And Anna could probably answer that better. Does that, to me, I don't think it would if you're not using, going back yeah. to the, the historical part. Um, yeah. Before we open the, it for yeah, but, other, other discussion, just to, to follow up on the roof, according to the Gill Associates, um, summary analysis um, in the original application. It was stated that the roof had was in good shape. Well, I actually saw it in two different spots. One place that said it was good, good shape, one said it was questionable. Um, but the, the main part when it talked about roof said that it was in good shape, just had some loose shingles. If, it's, if we're just repairing loose shingles, are replacing a roof that's in good shape because it has loose shingles. To me, that's not a, a CPA eligible. Um, or if it is, we shouldn't be giving towards that. Come up the, the, the only thing that concerns me about the roof is that if it leaks or if it gives way for any reason, structural or otherwise, then we're really jeopardizing all the restoration work that we funded because the roof is kind of key to keeping a building dry and preserving it. But if I remember correctly, the, the requested amount for the roof was not a lot of money. I can't put my finger on it right now. I don't know why I'm thinking like 29,000 or something like that. But, but, that's but would you replace the roof on your house because it had a few, loose shingles because somewhere down the line the roof might leak or do you wait till it well um but the roof is old isn't it i think the roof is is 25 or so years old so you know it's ready to be replaced uh anytime but it's not substantial money uh so uh, bill, uh, bill i'm going to take a different with that the actual cost 
to, as proposed by them with soft costs and everything else is for the roof, all things included that they proposed is 400,000. Oh, I, sorry, I, I missed that. <laughs> I have a question uh, about the, um, when we're talking about the roof I, and um, the eaves, do those fall under the roof work as well? Or the, 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 the elements that are under, on, the, on the eaves of the roof, are, do those fall under the roof funding? They actually fall under, and their third phase that fell underneath the uh, flush boards and the clapboards and all of that were fell underneath phase three. Phase three, okay. Okay. And is that, yeah. So, so roof, is just, we're looking at shingles. We're looking at like the mm -hmm. roof structure. Let's, let's, let's define the roof a little better. The yeah. roof has beams but I believe that the historian's report said we're in pretty good shape. I don't remember seeing that there were structural uh, restorations that needed to be done, nor um, other issues to strengthen the roof. Yeah, I actually took a look at the roof. I went into the eaves and climbed up there, and it, it didn't seem to have a lot of structural issues. And that's, I think, what the gentleman who was giving the tour to Gina and me also said. Okay, that, that's great. I, that's what I wanted to get to. If there's not structural issues that are identified right now, then it's really a shingle replacement on, this, on, on the roof. And that's, a, that's really maintenance to me because it's, what, I would ask the other question, what period would you take those shingles back to? Well, it would. I'm asking the church right now. Oh, oh. I wanna know where they're going. Um, Gordon, Gordon, could you unmute yourself? Gordon's the, the authority there. Do you see Gordon? Unmute. Left. <laughs> left. Yeah, there he is. He's the, he's the expert. <laughs> as far as the roof goes, uh, the, the architects we had look at the roof, they had not had a chance to look inside and they were concerned with the structural part of the roof. Although it looked all right to me, but I'm not an architect. They wanted to look inside. They didn't have those floorboards down uh, to completely check the roof. As far as the shingles go, uh, I don't know how long they've been there, but they've been there quite a while. We have replaced uh, some that blew off in the storm, and uh, there's no missing shingles at the moment. So, so I'm going to go back. In the report and the images that, that were there and that report that I read, I didn't see any identification there of what I will call important and urgent structural issues. They, yeah. they said we couldn't get all the way in, but they also took a lot of pictures that they talked to. Right. They, they, they made a big point. They were not able to go in to me. They're not able to go in and look because of, uh, it, they didn't have any flooring uh, that they could put their ladders in to look up at it. So yeah. was, it, was, it was an unknown. They, they couldn't do a close inspection, in other words. Right. Well, we were in the attic of the roof. Uh, anyway, I'm looking at uh, Anna's uh, preliminary cost estimate document that she sent out in the Dropbox. I, I know it's, uh, it's back from January from Gale Associates, and it says roofing and drainage, subtotal $133,550. That's just the roof and the drainage. Um, was that before they divided it up into phases? Is that the one that just had like a half a dozen prices on the left? Um, uh, yeah, that this was done. That was December yes, the 10th. three phases. Yeah, that's the date. Um, so it has the three phases. Has three phases. Yes, I think. It's a bit difficult. If it does, it has, it has on column G, it has steeple on column H, it's roof, and column I is walls. Right, so that's second phase, yep. The roof is second phase. Yeah, yeah. But the cost says 133,000. And the, the installation of the architectural grade asphalt shingles 
is estimated at thirty-two thousand five hundred dollars, and then there okay. are uh, and then there are gutters that are included in that downspouts and so forth. So the the cost of the roof, just replacing the asphalt shingles, is thirty-two thousand. Right, uh, and again, and that's, you... that's not a lot of money. Maybe we don't have to uh, fund that because that perhaps the church could fund that because that's not a lot of money. There are other costs related to the downspouts. Um, yeah, new downspouts, 24000 New downspouts, $24,000. New gutters, $13,000. Yeah. yeah. Right. There's, there's an, again, it's my opinion, the maintenance issues. They're not, like I said, unless the, the downspouts are some type of uh, historical downspouts, uh, Seems to me when I looked at them, they didn't look historical, but I might be wrong. I really didn't look at um, downspouts that close. Um, the part of the gutters, and Count was saying it, it's part of the roof. I was thinking it was part of the gutters. It's back and forth. It's, it's between the two phases a lot. Yeah, in between though, it's the part that goes like this, and it's all like carved. What is that? It's not the fascia. Is that the soffit? Is somebody from the church, maybe Gordon, can explain that? It seems to me, looking at pictures, it's right under the gutter. It's like a, it's not just plain flat wood. It looks like it's um, carved out. Right, it's, dec it's decorative wood, for sure. That's the word. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It, okay, but, is that I, I, under, if you are looking under this phase two? I don't know which document the gentleman was looking at, but my phase two document has a, an excessive a lot more money than what he was talking about. You know, mine too. Yeah. So, so what? What the document I have in front of me, and I'm sorry I didn't share it. The wood repair wood soffits at Eaves. The cost is estimated cost is ninety eight hundred. Repair wood soffits at Rakes. That's the uh, corner points. That's four thousand six hundred dollars. Repair wood fascia that was done at the steeple. Uh, there's another one is prepare and paint flush clabbered and belt course. Belt course is that little uh, different colored piece that goes about a third of the way up the building. Uh, seventy five hundred repair and paint fascia and soffit seventy seven thousand. Uh, repair and repoint the mason chimney twenty four thousand. And it goes on and on. Install chimney flue, for example. There's a chimney flue. I don't think that's a historic restoration, but I realize fully that it's a safety issue. But I don't think it's a historic restoration. Uh, let's see. Then it gets down into things like install new architectural grade asphalt shingles, 37,000, 42,000. Uh, install self ad adhering water barrier directly. So there's a water barrier that goes underneath that, 17,000. Install new gutters, 14,000. Install new downspouts, 24,000. Install attic ridge vent. There's not historically a ridge vent. I understand the need to keep it dry and cool, $7,000. Install new attic uh, ventilation, $1,700. Butter flashing, 3,700. Roof flashing, 1600 reinstall lightning protection i don't know when lightning protection went on the building but it could be historic but it's necessary 2500 so so when you get into that there's there's a whole mix of things that may or may not be eligible in my mind not card bunch let's put it that way uh -huh. i i agree too um one of the things that I had marked off that I'm really not sure what it is, and maybe maybe Gordon can explain it. It's under roofing and drainage. It's under phase one for the steeple. And it's apply elastrometric roof coating to ACC steeple panels. What is that? No, I I, I know. Where, whereabouts is that? In, on it's under roofing and drainage, and it's uh, uh, one, two, three. It's supposed to. Josh, I uh, wonder, can you share your screen so that everyone can look at what we're talking about instead of having everyone read? 
off of it. Um, the details breakdown. I think that might be able to streamline things a little quicker. Okay, that's true. Anna, do you have was that you just asking that? Anna. Or was that yes. Barbara? Do you have no, that? No, that was Anna, me, the, Anna. Okay. Do you have the the three phase one that you can share? Uh yeah, I can look I can look for it. I, um, I did send it if up. If that has it handy, that would be faster. Okay, that's true. So so the wolf has well, that's happening. The yes. roof has a number of elements that are not likely eligible. My problem with the shingles, the architectural shingles, I agree what they, that needs to be put up, but how do we set, defend that they're historic? We don't, because according to the Gale Associates uh, analysis, it didn't say anything about historic. It just, I think it said. Architectural singles. Right. Which. But I go back to my point. Why did we fund the re-roofing of the academy building uh, with shingles that were not historic? That's, that's we, my issue. Bill, did we do that? Did we do that? Did CPC have, uh, give money to repair the roof? CPC didn't fund, Bill, CPC didn't fund the whole academy building. It, no, they but, just funded a portion of it. Yeah, but what, 60% or something like that? But again, like, like Carlton said, did CPA funds go towards that replacement roof? And I thought the roof was done early on in the project before they actually started to strip the siding and all that kind of thing. So I don't know if CPA money covered that. Yeah, I, I can't say for sure either myself. Um, it's, it's a good point, Bill, but I, I don't, I think the argument here needs to be, I think you said it, what period are you restoring to? Because if it was, yeah. Other, other committee members, what do you think? Okay, Jean, Harry, Steve. I think, is that everybody? Jean, any thoughts? Um, well, if it, I don't know. <laughs> if it needs to be, well, repair and or replace are two different words that come up into play. That if you're talking historic, in my mind, yeah. If you're only repairing something, then does it come under CPA funds for historical restoration? Mm -hmm. um, but if you, uh, if the roof does need to be replaced, and if there are historically appropriate architectural shingles, um, you could, I would say you could go there. I don't know because that would prevent the leakage that would come down and seep in. Exactly. But there is no leakage yet. I, I, I know, guess, uh, but I mean, you know, Steve, I like the picture of the church behind you. Trying to show all the elements. <laughs> you got it. What, does the color of the shingles come into play because uh, like if i know that like looking back at old colorized images of the church it may not be using like the like the shingles that are currently on there are not may may not be chromatically color accurate to historically accurate so if we're um if the if we're trying to bring it back to like we can use for, if we're trying to repair the roof and using like architectural shingles that are more modern, but the color relates to um, what it historically was in the past, does that help make it more of a CPC eligible element? Okay. I, I was. I was looking at on page 20 of Gail's uh, evaluation of building enclosure Central Square Church. And 
He talks about the fact that different colored shingles are on the roof, that the soffit and trim brackets at the eaves show signs of deterioration in the form of peeling paint, cracks in the wood. I think you were asking about that, Anna. And then he says the fascia has been covered with aluminum sheet metal um, based on select test cuts. It's likely that the wood fascia behind the sheet metal is in deteriorated condition. Ongoing deterioration is likely due to moisture being trapped behind the sheet metal fascia. So there are some issues with the roof. Um, drainage from the roof is by means of residential grade lightweight aluminum gutters that have been mounted against the fascia and aluminum downspouts. So we know they're not historically uh, original. The gutters are undersized for the size of the roof and moisture damage at the eaves appear to be the result of this deficiency. Um, so that's, that's what he's, that, those are his summary comments on pages 20 and 21 of uh, that long booklet that uh, Anna sent us uh, in PDF form uh, a few days ago. And my, my question, I guess, on that to um, Barbara or, or Gordon or, or Rachel, is Bill just said, you know, quoted the thing that the downspouts were or aluminum or I can't remember exactly how he said it. Yeah. If they were replaced, are they just, is the price that we were given, is that just to replace them to a historical downspout or is that just to replace them with bigger downspouts because if we're replacing them historically that know? it's different than just replacing them with downspouts that are bigger that will more adequately um help with uh, the runoff from the roof um so that's a question to her that i have there for those, how would it be replaced? And I think it goes back to what the same thing that Calton asked a while back. If the roof shingles are replaced, are they replaced with or, or historical, or are they just being replaced with architectural grade? Asphalt. Shingles? Yeah. Yeah, asphalt. Thank you. So I, I think we need to ask Anna and Jen if, um, given their knowledge of other funding funded projects, have CPA funds been used in historic preservation projects uh, to replace uh, or to re-roof a building with architectural shingles, or are they always uh, restored back to the uh, to the original, which according to what the architect said last time, would be based on the longest period in the history of the building where a certain architectural feature was preserved. I think that's, I, I understand that's how he, he explained that. And we, we ran into this with the academy building because that was, structure that was architecturally three different buildings built at three different times and we tried to determine uh which part of the building existed the longest and we would try to be faithful to that to, to those elements in the uh uh in the building uh and getting around to the gutters for a moment uh that building originally had wooden gutters and um, we wanted wood, wooden gutters, but the preservationists said that uh, that would be cost prohibitive and so forth and so on. And so we, again, had to compromise and we have aluminum gutters and not wooden gutters lined in lead. Uh, so. Bill, I can answer that question um, that you had. You're right. So I the way I guess I'll approach it in two ways is it's not all CPA projects have been restoring 
the roof to its original roof or original features. In right. historic preservation projects, you can use definitely funds to restore a building to its original features if those are historic and they, for example, with the siding, one of the, as part of the proposal, the church has removing the vinyl siding to restore the original siding of the church. Right. And that right. is an eligible use. There are cases where you can use um, CPA funds to replace, I think, Jean, you had a question in when you, when we talked over email about the concern around the word replace. And in, from my understanding is I interpreted the word replace as replacing it like as like and in kind and in kind. So if you, for example, needed to replace, um, you know, a part of the window or um, they have the replacing the uh, wood pieces of the soffits, those right. would be replaced in kind with a, with a wood that matches the original, matches the wood that is there. So right. That is replacing the original architectural features. Yes. Okay. So what did you say about the roof again, that sometimes in historic buildings, the original yes. roof is not replaced, but a, 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 an architecturally appropriate uh, shingle is used on those roofs. Is that right? I, so here's what I'll say. If the roof, if the application comes, this is, this is, my, this is my interpretation. I don't know off the top, the top of my head what the, the roofing is right now in the church. If the church, if a project came in and they had, a, you know, the original shingles, um, you know, their slate, slate shingles, for example, right. on the roof, but they wanted to use CPA funds to replace those shingles with asphalt. Um, and in removing those architectural features, you, I would not consider that an inappropriate use of CPA funds. If right. they already but, had asphalt shingles and the roof yes. was in disrepair and in danger of ruining the building, and for example, if there was water, if there's issues with potential water damage or with um, the with, uh, water seeping in, then you could, I would say you can use CPA funds because you're preserving yeah. the building and not allowing um, the building to fall into such disrepair that you would lose the building. Right. Yeah. The, well, and of course, there are asphalt shingles on the roof now on yeah. the church. Yeah. But I'm not sure that it's in. I, it's, I don't think it's ready to cave in and to leak, you know, tomorrow. So that's the question I yeah. guess we have to decide. Yeah. I guess I would Sorry? urge the CPC to focus kind of to consider both the CP, the, CS, the church's priorities in terms of what they're, they feel like the highest need is and also yeah. what the greatest benefit to the community would be in funding elements of the church. Good, Good advice. Good advice. Yeah. If I thought of the discussion a minute ago, what I would say is the language would be refurbish the roof, not repair. I would say, but yeah, refurbish. Carlton, just, just, just to clarify, the language is restore and rehabilitate. It's not refurbish. Just, just the. But the just newest language includes refurbish. Yeah, it's preserve, restore, and rehabilitate they're tied to actions along with the Secretary of Interior standards. Okay, rehabilitate. That's what I need. Steve, Steve had his hand up a while ago. <laughs> oh, well, I think what I was just said, going back to where my uh, initial conversation of does the color make it, uh, bring the color of the, the roof, does that bring, make it CPA eligible because I was looking through some of my historic photos and postcards of the um, of the um, church and I have one from probably around like 1900 where the the roof was red um, mm. I don't know if that's in it red. I, I, um, I can share with everyone uh, and you can barely see it in my in my background because it didn't it didn't frame correctly but, but, but it, was, it, was, it was a brick red or something like that right it was, yeah. So, like, when you're looking at, um, like, uh, historic preservation and also, like, the downtown area, if, when you're looking at the outside of the building, if that was preserved, if that was restored, that might be a, an element that would enhance, like, the downtown, if it was, but I don't know, like, personally, right now, I don't know 
what the plan was to for the roof if it was just to replace it as is the same color or are we trying to go back to something like this to bring it back to what it used to look like that's interesting about the red roof i'm sure it wasn't tile yeah. though yeah like barrel tile i'm sure that was clay tile i'm sure that was not the case because that was not feature it must have been some kind of shingle uh a red color from what I see, the, the postcard that, that I have, the, the title of the the um, the file is Congregational Church with Red Roof. Oh, ah, that's wow. fascinating. Fascinating. It could have been shingles that had been stained or something, too. You know, cedar, that kind of thing. That's what, that's what, that's what I see. In, does, the, how, does the color affect, even if it is, we are using a red architectural shingle, it's bringing it back to what it used to look like. But with new elements. My opinion is if we were to fund this and that was part of the funding, then the recommendation would be to bring it back to that kind of color. So that, it could that, be, could have been, it could have been cedar shakes or something like that. Right. Thin ones, actually. So, so for discussion purposes, the roof and the chimney seem to go hand in hand. And, and roof and chimney, I think, are probably equally important for the church. Uh, moving through the other, Adam, how, how critical are the windows and doors? Are they leaking water now? Are they simply uh, need some wood replaced and then uh, painted? I can't remember the condition. I looked at the doors, Gina and I, and they seem to be in pretty good shape. And I think they're the original doors because they are yeah. three plus inches thick. Yep. They're really fine yeah. doors. So I don't think a lot of work is gonna to have to be done on the doors. I, we would not allow on the Stuart District Commission for them to be replaced, I can tell you that. Because no. they're, uh, the hardware might need replacing. Uh, that probably had was not the original hardware, but the doors themselves are in very good condition and are, are very uh, handsome. They'll probably need to be stripped down. Yes, yes, Fuel they definitely, paint. yes. You live paint enough. Yeah, serious painting. <laughs> can, can we hear from Harry? Harry, your thoughts? Harry, you're muted though. Harry, Terry, go. You have to. Get, you're on mute. Unmute yourself, Ter. No, not Terry. <laughs> Harry. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was Terry. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> Harry Bailey. You don't really want to hear my thoughts. Oh yes, I do. <laughs> as yeah, as I, I've said many times, where you know, it's we all have our ideas, and they're all equally important, and I want to hear them all. Why were the roofs back in the day, the steel roofs, the tin roofs? Why did all the old houses in Bridgewater have tin roofs? Because they were sturdy so roofs. Because no, you had, it, you had the foundry fire. and you had stows and hot putting sparks into the air, right? <laughs> what, makes you, what makes you think the church in the downtown didn't have some kind of clay roof? You don't know. Right, all, true. All the buildings, all the old buildings, had tin roofs for that reason. So the church Probably had true. a clay roof. You don't know. Excellent point. But I don't know of any uh, churches that would have clay roofs because it, it, they're so heavy. We had a clay roof on our house in Bridgewater and there were only two houses in town that had clay roofs. <laughs> but um, I've never seen a church with a clay roof, but I could be wrong. And you've never had a church near a foundry. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Don't argue. I don't think like other people. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, that's why we love you. I had a quick question about the, like when we were talking about the age of the doors, you, yeah. you're talking about the front doors, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Um, what are you looking to go back like, to? Go back to? Cause I, I'm looking at like photos from 1900 and they are, the, the doors have been replaced since then because right now we, there's a glass above the doors. At one point they were 
uh, wood doors all the way to the top? We think that perhaps they were cut off at that point. That maybe that top arch, those semicircular arches, because uh, mm -hmm. Judy Gabriel knew all about this. Uh, we discussed this in the Sturt District Commission meeting with the church. And we think that that top part of the roof, I mean, of the, uh, of the uh, doors uh, had been cut off. Uh, maybe it warped or something like that. Mm -hmm. But these yeah, these yeah. are these are really impressive big doors, like yeah. o over three inches uh, wide. Right. And uh, the only reason I, I bring I, I question is I'm I'm looking at that once again that postcard, and um, there's actually where like the there's um, right now there's two doors that take up that whole space. Right. Um, originally, it looked like there were three yeah. panels. Rather than so, I'm wondering if those the doors are was it from the 50s renovation or? Well, the uh, uh, Gordon and I looked at them pretty closely. I mean, I am no expert. I can tell you that, yeah. but uh, I, I I I really felt that they were very old doors. If they're not original, those doors are a hundred years old or something like that. I mean, they they're uh, I mean, they just don't make doors thick and solid like that now, or not in the last even 50 or 60 years. But uh, uh, Judy Gabriel was very interested in the doors because she remembered how beautiful they were with these, uh, uh, with the arches at the top. The uh, And uh, we asked Gordon about uh, those door, uh, the uh arches and he said they were no longer they weren't around i guess they were disposed of right uh, so the point here was the church records can inform that point of change but yeah. I, if i understand what i read the doors did need some you know clean up uh, maybe a little bit of uh, restoration work on cracks or something and then painting but that was the sum total of all of that i think but i think right. Am I correct in that for the church folks? Anybody? But what was proposed for the restoration of the doors? Painting only or? I don't know. Gordon? I, I, I don't recall. Okay. No, I don't have a thing on the doors. Okay, I'm looking under windows and doors on that, that sheet that had the phases on it. Oh. Um, it just says repair. Right. Yeah, it's unfortunate they use that word. But that says repair door hardware. It doesn't say repair the doors. Yeah. The hardware needs re repairing for sure. Okay, so, so it's not a huge cost, but it's necessary. Because I think unless they have to dismantle the door and refit it and do all sorts of things. I'm trying, I would like just to get down a little bit further into this list because after windows and door, and we, what I think the only windows that we could actually fund that are eligible would be the historic ones. And anything that's a vinyl replacement or that kind of thing and any kind of uh, uh, home windows and that kind of stuff uh, are probably not covered because it's not historical. And in the Academy building, what they did is they restored the, the 77 or so of the 144 windows through a anti uh, lead paint, uh, lead removal process. And that wood was then brought back and the window glass was put back in and they were painted. And then in order to make the building airtight, they put uh, custom designed storm windows up there that you don't even see them, but they're there. I don't think you have any intentions of making the building airtight. So your restoration would be really to just fix the wood of those non-vinyl, non, -vinyl, non more, more modern windows. And I think that cost is broken out. I couldn't tell which one. It was four windows or six windows. And they're not stained. They're just glass windows. And if any of those windows have the historic glass, which you can tell quickly because it's wavy and has bubbles and that kind of stuff, then those need to be carefully restored and they probably have lead in the putty. And that creates a, but we know a local firm that can do all that stuff. I don't know what the cost is. The long-term value of that 
I'm sorry I'm lecturing, but the long-term value of that is that those windows that are original will outlast the modern windows that were put in the academy building. Yeah. Just as a postscript on the, wind, on the door, I found in Gail's report uh, uh, a note ab about the, the doors, and he says they're in, generally in fair condition. Entry door is generally in fair condition, so. But that's not, I don't see that included in the price list. Yeah, well, uh, well then that's not a factor. Right. And that, that uh, we, don't, we don't have to consider it. <laughs> can, can I make a suggestion that might make this whole discussion and vote easier? Um, I know we have the motion to identify what we can do what we could fund and then come up with a price. Would it smooth line it if we vote on that and defeat the motion and go to the other option that we come up with a maximum dollar amount and we've already identified the steeple and part of the, the roof and the, again, I'm not sure what that, um, Decorative wood is it look like it was in disrepair per the the Gale report. Uh, we've already identified some something. So if we set a maximum of X number of dollars, and then we just say okay, it goes towards the steeple, it goes towards the roof, it, and we identify the things instead of going through every element. And what if we decide we don't want to spend that much money? Point of order. What's the mo can Joshua? Can you read back the motion, please? Because it's been a while. Uh, it has. <laughs> it's been a long while. <laughs> I can't even remember it. <laughs> I see you're unmuted, Joshua. I'm assuming you're looking it up. I think it was basically. The way I had said the option. So let me jump back to hold on. Hello. Hey, Joshua. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Yes. I can't hear you right now if you're talking. Well, well, Josh is looking it up. I thought it, if I remember right, and again, it was a, a while ago. It was basically my, what I had said as an option to, to decide the elements to be funded and then how much should go towards them. Okay, so first thing is we're gonna decide what we're gonna fund, I think, under the motion, unless it gets modified. Mm -hmm. right. But if somebody called the, or the motion to a vote, and we vote and we defeat that, and somebody makes a motion for yeah. option one. That, it's then, just a suggestion, just a thought. Yeah, that's a suggestion, but I think the amendment would have to be something like, uh, we would amend it to uh, end in all X, Y, Z. So, for example, possibly we would have a motion amendment that, uh, to restore and refurbish the steeple structural and exterior elements. And then you can add another amendment, so it's specific. We have to put this before the town council and it has to be really clear to them what we're funding and why. Yeah. Right, that's why that's in, in my thought, just to move the line it instead of putting, because that wasn't the intent of the, the motion to put a vote for each separate and do amendments for each separate one. Um, it was to decide, and I mean, we could always do the amendments, but to me, according to the motion, it was to decide what elements, which we've been doing, um, going through and discussing the various elements. And, um, and, where, and where under this motion have we decided which elements we would fund? No way. We, we, we haven't yet. <laughs> That's why I'm saying we're, we're going through basically every line on right. the but sheet, I, I, which, is, which is fine. I have I, no problem I think with that. You made, you made a good point. I think we're at a place 
that we can make amendments to the motion that would identify the major elements that we're willing to fund. I, I don't mean to interrupt. I just, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm so sorry I'm, I'm late. I was installing a granite mailbox and I literally just got home and um, I apologize for my, for my absence. Um, just want to let you know I joined the call. Okay, Thank thanks, Kevin. Oh, but maybe I'm we should go. Is, sorry. No, and I'm just thinking that maybe because it doesn't mean we have the church's priority list. Um, it doesn't mean we have to fund a portion of every part of it. If Correct. they're saying that priority is the steeple, um, I can't remember what was next, but hmm. their prioritized list from, you know, that most important down. It doesn't right, right. mean we have to fund every one of those seven elements. Correct. So if we, if we decide that all our money is going towards the steeple and the chimney, then there's no need to go through every element. See what I'm yes. saying? Yes, and I'm going to make a suggestion here. Bill, you seconded the motion and I made it. I'm going to withdraw the motion because it generated a lot of discussion, but I don't think it will get us to where we want to go. So I'm going to ask to withdraw the motion. I second that. Now, I move to fund elements of the steeple restoration the roof and chimneys. Cost to be determined. Recommendation of funding to be uh, determined. Josh, did you get that for me? I'm sorry, but we need a second also. Do we still not have a number from the church? Yeah, it's gonna have to just bear with us. We have no numbers. The process that we're following, I'm sorry, is that we were going to say what we could fund, and then we were going to, under a separate discussion, talk about how much we're going to fund. Understood. Why are we, why are we admitting, admitting the siding from this? It would seem to me that that's one of the top priorities, is to remove the siding, the vinyl siding on the church. But it's that's not fifth, what the, the church has said is the priority, Bill. It's the fifth one. Oh, okay. Okay. We have Quite a, before, we, before we discuss more, we have a motion that Calton just made. We're looking for a second for it for discussion. I thought I heard Bill sent a second it. Um, I thought that was the motion to remove your motion from the table, which we never voted on, uh, by the way. Um, that, right. He I right. Stand corrected. Yeah. Okay, so Calton has made a new motion that we need a no, second. No, I have withdrawn the motion. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Um, we have to vote on that. Right, thank you. Um, yeah, no worries, Gina. It's, it's easy to get excused. Okay, um, any discussion on removing the, remote, no. uh, removing the motion? Okay, hearing none, roll call to, uh, for Calton's motion to be is recall the proper term? Remove, recall. Recall, no, not a Re recall. Remove, rescind. I'm, cancel the motion. Okay, that's a good <laughs> uh, That's funny. Are you guys able to hear me? This is Josh. Hi. Yeah, we can hear you, Josh. Okay, so we're withdrawing the Carlton's original motion and we're getting ready to take the roll call vote, correct? Correct. Yes. Uh, the had difficulties here, so it's coming in and out. Um, so we're ready to vote? Yes. Okay. Uh, Gina? Yes. Carlton? Yes. Dean? Yes. Steve? Yes. Gary? Yes. Bill? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Okay, thank you. It's passed. I just want to go on record to say that's the longest discussion of any motion that I've ever been through. And then they have it. Then they have I think it. I think that's a record. 
<laughs> it may be, but emotion was not clearly articulated as to what we wanted, and it was going to go nowhere. I agree. I agree. Right. That's why. That's why I made. Uh, and I know I did vote for the the motion in the first place, but as the discussion was going on, uh, it was just <laughs> going to keep going on, um, like the little energizer bunny. It was going to keep going. Um, so that's why I suggested, and thank you, Colin, for um, taking back the motion. Um, so I'll leave it to someone else to make the next motion. Okay, another motion. The, the other option was to put a monetary end. I'm not making a motion. This was part of the procedure that I had said that I suggested as two options to entertain a motion for. Um, one was the one we just called back. The other was to put a monetary cap on the historic aspects of the application and decide what the funds should go towards. Um, if somebody, I'll entertain a motion to that effect, somebody can change the wording. And however, I think I'll, you know, if anybody has different wording that wants to make that motion, because I think that seems to be the way we're, we're headed right now. Well, Carlton's suggestion was the steeple restoration, the roof and the chimney. That's correct. Yep. Those were the I, elements. Mm -hmm. And I still don't understand why we don't include the siding. I mean, that's the siding is clearly the most egregious uh, feature of this church that, and that but, that really should be removed okay so let's let's go ahead and put the siding in because that is yeah. an important element we haven't yeah. got a motion but let's put that in gordon just a question the um the siding uh, really should be done after the windows are replaced we have a fifty five thousand dollars most of those windows will be replaced and they should be done before the siding is put up okay thank you gordon well, let's include everything. Oh, we had a good discussion. <laughs> we did. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, is the the siding obviously we're not well, we haven't voted on it, but if per chance we don't fund your whole application, is the siding something that I can't remember what, what we said for the price for the siding, or actually, if I go back to my document, I know. Um, is that something that's feasible for the church to cover? I'm, I'm looking back to, to my, my document here. I imagine that's probably the, the, most co the most expensive bit of the renovation, I'd imagine. Uh, so, so Gina, I'm going to try to do a motion that might move us forward. Okay. Uh, Go for it. I move to consider funding all of the elements that are eligible for historic preservation money. I second that. Okay, are you? Yeah, makes sense. And the reason for doing that, since we're under a second now, is that we can now discuss how much money we want to spend in total. Yeah, okay. then, that gives us, then that gives us a, whole, a number that we can divide up and then we can move forward. A number that we can discuss in total. Okay, yeah. can we? But, can but do, do we know what the cost of the elements that can be funded is, the total cost. Because I don't know how we can put a dollar figure on something unless we know generally what uh, the cost will be to restore everything that's eligible to be restored. Well, we don't have to. Does that make any sense? It does. Well, and, and to me, but that's to me. Um, but we don't need to fund it in its entirety. Right. Like right. if the steeple is X number of dollars, 
um, say we agree to put a cap on a dollar amount cap, then we can identify in that cap that so much goes for the steeple, so much for the chimney, so much for the, the roof, and maybe, not maybe, we'd, we'd have to, because as Colin said, we should be very specific for the, the town council, and I think we should be specific um, anyways, regardless of for the town council, I think we should be very specific I mean, at, in it. At, um, at, this po at this point, do we know which elements are absolutely eligible for funding? Well, and that's where my suggestion was going to be for an amendment to request an amendment for this that we say, instead of saying, I'm not, not sure the phrase you use, Colton, but for the, or the eligible items, I think we should actually specify what, what we're calling eligible items. You know, in, in the, in the, the big picture of the elements we identified, like uh, steeple, the steeple, roofing, uh, the siding, that, that prioritized list. Um, then we can, to be specific, we can say, well, it doesn't cover the shingles or it doesn't cover the downspouts, something like that. Um, so if we could, and I'm trying to open my list, and of course my list isn't opening. Um, you know, I, I just so so to help a little bit. The list that I had put together was my opinion as to what was eligible and not eligible. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I add into that list in the spreadsheet that I have and look at likely eligible materials, likely other uh, stuff like overheads and that kind of thing. Uh, and then I have what's questionable el uh, eligible in my list. If I sum those three elements, I get $358,000 for the steeple, $236,000 for the roof, and $496,000 for the walls. That sums up to, in my opinion, about $1,100,000. And okay, so now we have a figure we, we can work with. That's, that's very good, Carlton. In my opinion, it's only my opinion, because you guys haven't seen my spreadsheet in detail, it's only my opinion that that's the upper limit. I also have the opinion that we can't afford that. Um, I, I definitely uh, agree with that. Uh, that. And plus, if it's just, that's just for those three elements. No, the no that, whole, that's for all three phases as proposed by the church. Oh, okay, you're doing the three phases. I, I'm sorry, I thought you were specifying three, three no, elements. Because, because the motion is that we'll consider all of those. I guess we voted on that, I can't remember now. We, we haven't voted on it yet, we're, we're okay. just, so well, I'm, actually, we're discussing the, the motion before we and, vote. And so, as part of the discussion, then I've added that cost element to the discussion as to whether or not you want to include all of them, and then we can talk about reality of funding in another motion. Okay, um, we still don't have a second on the motion, though. I, I seconded that. Oh, okay. I thought you yeah. seconded rescinding the other one. Yeah, I did that too. Okay. <laughs> okay, you got that, Josh? Yeah, I got that. <laughs> Josh, you're wonderful. You really are. <laughs> um, okay, all in favor of Calton's motion, Josh, can you read that back to us, please? Carlton Hunt motion to consider funding of all the elements that are eligible for historic preservation money. And that <laughs> dollar figure, that do and we should include the dollar figure, right? No, I'm just as part of discussion provided that because it's only oh, my. Oh, okay, okay, okay. My, okay. I, I don't think we should. Okay. Yeah, so just to clarify, Carl's is just saying that that's the amount if we do all three, all included, it's an all inclusive package, correct? Just so I make, no, make sure that's all inclusive. It's those that are eligible and likely eligible for CPA funding. Okay, I. 
it out. I would I would still like to see it. This I would still like to see it specified because one of the things that they have on their priority list is ninety five thousand dollars for miscellaneous. That miscellaneous Gina the motion is to include everything and now we have to hone it down after we have this motion to move it forward. We can nickel and dime ourselves to death here. Oh, I, I understand. I would just like to see those categories added, added in because that we're there, we're defining they are right? in my calculation. They okay, are. You know what? Let, let's just, we'll just vote on the motion. Roll call on the motion, Josh, please. Sure. Gina? Yes. Carlton? Yes. Jean? Yes. <coughs> yes. Kevin? They vote before you yes. do this. Harry? Yes. Bill? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Now, I'm going to leave it up to the rest of you to f propose a funding amount. Somebody besides me make a motion, please. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, like you, you do too many down. motions. Someone else needs to step up, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, because like, just like Gina said, you know, we, we don't have to fund the entire amount, right? So we could just do a percentage of, of what that is. So we can, you know, break it up and then make it manageable for us. And it's a win-win for both, both parties, right? Correct. Yeah. So, I, I mean, that seems like the smart way to, to do it. Um, I, I'm sorry, can, can someone just repeat the, the numbers again for, for the three... Uh, for the breakdown again? I'm not sure if it was our, I'm looking through my emails right now. I just don't have it. It's, it's not in your emails. Okay. It's in my spreadsheet that I developed and it's my personal estimate of what is eligible and likely eligible for funding by CPA and it's for each of the phases. And it's a million eighty-eight thousand dollars million eighty eight thousand so yep. that sets an upper limit in my mind and then and then just really quick the breakdown for because you said it was three phases right and then what, what was the cost for each phase? I can repeat that for you so under this scenario the steeple would be eligible for three hundred and fifty eight thousand three fifty eight yep and the roof would be potentially eligible for 235,000 and the walls, et cetera, and everything else that goes would be 495,600. Okay, thank you very much, appreciate it. And again, I will reiterate, that's my- That's your, that's your, that's your personal, opinion. Opinion. Uh, personal, yeah. And I'd like us to get under motion. Okay. Well, uh, Oh, Kevin, go ahead. I'm well, can, can we can we discuss that? We're, we're yeah. in discussion mode. Motion. Let's we're get under discussion so we can. We haven't even made a motion. All oh, right. We okay. voted. We we voted on the motion. Now we're discussing it. We voted the motion to do what? I'm sorry, I'm losing it. <laughs> You're not alone, Carlton. Well, no, we've determined that. Um, these are the elements that are eligible for historic preservation under this CPC, CPA Act. So based, based on Carlton's perspective. Based, now, yes. If you want to fund anything, you have to put some motion forward as yeah. to what you want to fund and specifically what you want to fund. Yeah, well, and that's our purpose. That's our purpose as a committee is to determine that. And that's what we yes, do. need a motion. I'm going to, I'm going to make a motion. I'm going to make a motion for $130,000 for the first three items, the steeple, the roof, and the chimney. One th one thirty each? No, 130000 to do all three. To do all total. three? Total. Okay. Total. Okay. Do we have a second? Can I, can I second this, Chia? Yes. Can I second? Okay. I second the motion. Well, will somebody repeat that motion? I, I can't believe what I'm hearing. 
138. Okay, I'm going to explain it to you. I took down the figures that the church committee gave. Steeple, 118,000. The roof. Well, we're, we're going to discuss the roof. The chimney, 37,000. All right? I'm putting a motion in for $130,000 to do the three of them, and we'll go through what they can and can't do. And then they can come back for the rest on phase two. Mm -hmm. So to, to clarify, since it's under second, so you're uh, proposing to uh, uh, recommend $130,000 to the town council for specifically? To do the steeple, the chimney, and we have to discuss what's going to be done on the roof because they already gave figures to that. And I'm the only one that goes over is the roof. Okay, I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying. It's basically to, it's really a partial funding that right. we're that's right. okay. oh, and, 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 and in your opinion, it's they may come back for more. Yes. Ah. Uh -huh. So, so I mean, th 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 this will a, hardly cover the cost of the study that they've done. This well, is an wait, insulting. This is that. an insulting right. amount of money to but allocate. Bill, Bill, we can't cover the cost of the study. That was done before the application was voted on. So right, anything but, that's the cost of the study, CPA cannot fund. Right, um, I understand that, but I'm just speaking to the very large costs. That are projected for this uh, for this project. I mean, this is this is a huge amount of money, and to give one hundred thirty thousand dollars, I, 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 Gary, I, Gary, what were you saying? I have the cost written down that the that the church gave us. The steeple, one hundred. I'm going to round it out. One hundred nineteen thousand. The mm -hmm. chimney, forty thousand. They put two hundred eighteen thousand on the uh, roof. And I think that's way too high. And we have to discuss what they're gonna, we've already had a discussion on that, whether the, we're gonna put asphalt or what up there. But they can spend that amount of money and if they can't do the whole roof, then they can come back and do a second. Uh -huh. I have a question about the um, the amounts. Like you're, Harry, you're saying that um, for the steeple, it says it's around 118,000, is that correct? 119 rounded out. Okay. And um, Carlson, uh, when you um, were going over the, the phases, yep. uh, and phase one is generally the root, is the, is the steeple, this phase, phase one. Phase one is the steeple almost in its entirety. And you said that was $358,000. That's, that's based on what I, we were given in another spreadsheet that I transposed. And so it's about $358,000. You know, that includes, let me just say what that 358,000 includes. It includes protection for safety entrances, dumpsters and debris removal, uh, equipment rentals, administration and associated work, temporary protection of windows large, windows lo small. No, that's not right. Okay, forget that last one. The superintendent of the works, uh, demolition of vinyl siding. That is included in the steeple Okay. Yeah. Um, repair and, and replace. And repair and replace deteriorated flash flush board, and also the clapboard, and repair wood fa fascia and repair wood rake boards, uh, and prepare and paint flush clapboards and paint course, etc. Okay. And so, and so it also, it also, my it also includes. The mobilization fee, the overhead and profit, the permit cost, and the, uh, the uh, everything else. Okay. Okay. And and Harry, the one hundred one hundred nineteen thousand. That's just a, a, a general view of like what, the just the work minus all the general conditions. The that one hundred eighteen one hundred nineteen thousand doesn't include. Um, According to what the church submitted, um, the general category would have to be allocated. That's the one, like the, the staging and all that, to each separate section, as with uh, one hundred seventy thousand dollars soft costs. Um, okay. So, in addition to that one hundred 
19,000 for the steeple, 37,000 for the chimney. There are soft costs um, associated with that. So maybe Harry, we could, you made the motion and I did the second on it, that we could possibly increase that amount because it doesn't include the soft costs. Okay, Just well, a, what's everybody think that's gonna be? Well, Harry, where, where are you getting this with these numbers from? Is this is this from your opinion? Oh, sure. that you, it's, I, you missed I, it. Just, it Tina or Josh, can you pull up the numbers that they're that Harry's talking about? Because those are new numbers that the church sent over that I not everyone got a copy. Okay, of. Josh, I I think I I emailed that to you like during the meeting. Uh, and what I believe Harry's trying to do is set a number that mm -hmm. for us to recommend, and he's suggesting at this point that the 130,000 go to two elements of the program. And that's the steeple and the chimney, and then right. the roof is partial. Correct. Josh, do you have that? However they want to use it, but we have to specify what it will be for at some point. Correct. Yeah, but if we specify, they have to use that for that specification, correct? That's correct. Well, we specify they have to use it for. And right. if the town council accepts it. Right, correct. right. It has, to, it has to be vetted through them, of course, yeah. What you were looking for. Okay, this, thanks, Josh. This is right here, Kevin, that's yeah. what... Um, yeah. yeah, it's all about the numbers. I, yeah, we need to see numbers in front of us. I mean, that's everything. They're right there. I have yeah. them. That's where yeah. I got them from, right there. Yeah. That's what we and, need. Okay. I, mean, that, I, mean, I don't know how we can extrapolate 130,000 from these enormous figures. Can people hear me? Because I've changed horses in the middle of the stream here. Yep, we can, yeah, okay, we can hear you. We can, we can see you now, too. Good. Yeah, good. William, I, we can finally see your, your face there. That's good. <laughs> Lucky you. Yeah. <laughs> no more keyboard warriors. We don't need them. Mm -hmm. But I think, Bill, to answer your question, yes, we can. Because, yes, there's a lot of prices there. They amount to, to quite, a, quite a bit of money. But the motion is specifying two, possibly three elements off of that whole list. I mean, honestly, I mean, really quick. I mean, this is this is kind of an easy thing for me to when I, if I see the numbers, it makes it so oh. so much more convenient. But I mean, I I mean, for just personally speaking here, um, I mean, I think we should forget miscellaneous because that's not spec. We need to be spe uh, specified in this venture. So I would even I would nick that. I'm well, I think the miscellaneous is your is doesn't that come under your staging and all that? Oh no, I that's don't. Done. I don't think so because I missed there, that bottom figure. <laughs> yeah, Josh, can you scroll down just a, a tad for that the text part, please? Oh. I, don't I don't think we can pay for equipment rentals, <laughs> right? I, I don't know if that's eligible. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that is. I mean, I I, I can't imagine it is. Just tell me if this total amount of, uh, goes to the five point one point five whatever million dollars. Does it total to that? Explain your question again, Calton. Please scroll the screen down, and I'll do a quick calculation. If you scroll scroll it down a wee bit. Yeah, he oh, just okay. wants to no, scroll uh, it up. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I want the numbers, all of them. Yeah, he just wants to know if it totals the 1.5 million total. That's all he wants to know. You want to be close. Yeah. You want to be close. Okay. If I were my advisor for my PhD, I would have added them already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so chimney. He's... Yeah, it does. Okay, thank you very much. Somebody's quicker than I am. I'm close. Jean's, Jean's quick. But I will point out, general, we haven't talked about the staging, equipment rentals, dumpsters, police, fee, all that kind of stuff's in there. And is the miscellaneous include the, uh, uh, I, I don't like uh, putting uh, contingencies in here, and that includes contingencies also. And probably in the general. I know there was 180,000 in contingencies. I think contingencies were listed at the bottom of the spreadsheet. 
with the three phases. Con contingencies were listed as right the problem. Right now I'm looking at what this is. Oh, okay, you're looking at that one. Right. My guess is contingencies were, would be under general? Or I'm guaranteed. Miscellaneous. Um, Gordon, do you know? Oh. Miss Gordon. Um, where in this list that we have the screen up now, where would like the contingency costs fall? Would it be under miscellaneous or general? I, I'm coming up with a motion, by the way, soon. I think it's going to be We're under motion right now, so it has to be an amendment. We have to vote on that motion of right. 130,000. We, well, we can we can we can vote on it, or we can have somebody amend it. There's right. lots of time. Okay, Harry. I'm waiting for Frigid to amend it. I is the one who seconded it that. Well, that doesn't, those figures don't include any of the soft costs, like the staging and all that, that are, I mean, they need staging. I'm going to have, I'm going to have an amendment in a minute. I just need to run the numbers here. So just to let you know, that's. Okay. Well, yeah. But Harry, my suggestion would be for an amendment to maybe add a percentage more of for that, for the soft cost, maybe. We could do that in another motion. What, what I see what Harry, Harry's doing here and what the church did, they're looking at the materials and labor list for the most part, uh, yeah. roofing, yeah. siding, windows, doors, chimney, steeple, et cetera. And then they're adding the overhead and all those other figures in under the 349,000. So if we want to discuss further that this would money would be restricted to only the materials and labor for that element, we can do that because we can check on that. Yep, good, good point. Because it and actually that Carlton that is a more accountable, more a better way to be accountable. Because if a bill comes in for staging, but they're working on the steeple and the roof at the same time, how do you differentiate what cost goes for what? Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think that suggestion yeah. is a good one. Um, Carrie, could we amend our motion? I have, have, have an okay, right. Kevin, Everybody can bring an amendment forward. Yep. Carrie, can we amend what, what we said and make it say for materials and labor well we, for the we actual can amend, items you know we can, but, we can amend gina are you making a friendly um, uh, amendment to, to the uh motion to say it's restricted to materials and labor for the items yes i am thank you i guess that's what i'm trying to do we'll make that um, a <laughs> Thank you. I was thinking that Harry would have to do it because he was his motion well, to be you in, you can make the amendment and you okay. second it. So you can I, okay, I would make a, a friendly amendment to that that would restrict the to the cost of materials and labor and not to include the soft costs. And I can go along with that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. If, do we but have I'm an still, idea of what that cost is? But I'm still sticking it's to that. Under the amendment, it's 130,000. Under the motion, it's 130,000. I'm going to amend the motion to, to, to do different figures. Uh, move it. Go okay, ahead. Okay, do, do we okay. have to vote on the amendment we have first? Or? It was yeah. friendly. We got it, a lot it, of it, running around here, and I'm trying to, trying to make sure I have them all here. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, Let's let Josh get caught up here. Sure. So I have. Are, are we working on the amendment right now? Or no. A motion. A motion was made. One hundred thirty thousand dollars and some divvying it up. Of that was made. I suggested in discussion that it be for materials and labor for the elements that are included in that motion. Right. So I I offered and the amendment. You know, offered a friendly amendment. To include those two words. And we have to right. vote on that amendment now. Right, but let's, 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 let's,
Okay, Josh, are you caught up on that? Yes, but we, we don't have a second on the motion. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's I, second the, I second the motion. I second Our, the motion. Actually, Harry said. Bill put it forward and Bill seconded it. I call the question. No. No, what, what, Harry, what, what motion are we talking about now? No, Harry, amendment. Colton, amendment. I made the friendly, I made the friendly amendment, and Harry did a second on it. Oh, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I'm that. sorry, I misspoke. Yeah, yeah, I, I said second just to move it. I, can we stack amendments? Can we do multiple no. amendments and no. 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 You can't amend the amendment, but I suggest we not do that. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Yeah, let's not get too confused. Right. <laughs> That's right. I'm as confused as it is. Um, uh, okay. Any other discussion on the friendly amendment, which was to keep the 130,000 but restrict it to materials and labor only? It's still keeping the number only at 130,000. I got a problem with 130,000. I don't know if I'm sure. on it. Just vote on the motion, please. Yes. And we'll do the next one. Okay. Uh, Is that the motion? Yeah. Roll call, Josh, please. Gina? Yes. Carlton? Yes. Dean? Yes. Steve? Yes. Harry? Yes. Bill? No. Kevin? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, so the motion carries the $130,000 to go to the steeple, the chimney, yeah. and I think it was possibly roofing, depending on what we identify as um, being eligible for those parts. Can you entertain is, more motions, please? I, I, have, a, I have a motion. I'd like Amendment. to. Or an amendment, excuse me. Uh, okay. So, like for me, I I I motion that we handle the chimney for thirty-seven thousand two hundred and sixty-seven dollars per the the list. The the steeple for one hundred and eighteen thousand eight hundred and sixty-four dollars. So that covers the steeple per estimates, and the door, which is twelve thousand. Five hundred and eighty-six dollars to cover the the door that they want to have done, and that totals it's one sixty-eight, I believe. Let me just run the number. I I I'm saying just around to one seventy, just to make it a whole number. Um, that just I like whole numbers. It's an extra two grand. <laughs> they can use that for windows if they wanted to, or up to there. No, yeah. we have we have to be specific. We can't just say we're giving them an extra fair, two thousand to use fair what enough. they want. <laughs> Fair enough. Then, let, then I just motion that we do the chimney, steeple, and the door for the set amounts, for the, and then that's the total. Just those three things, and then, you know, that's 168000 I feel comfortable with that number, personally, and I feel like that would, I, I won't even want to, I don't want to touch the roof, but that's what I propose as, a, as an amendment to the motion is just the chimney, the steeple, and the door, and the reason I like that is because it just, it completes those three topics. Instead of doing oh. fractional things, it's a oh, second and for further discussion. Mm -hmm. Carlton did that. Yep. Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, discussion. Do we have an amendment, that? or do we have a mo another motion? Is that another this is, motion? This is an amendment to the motion that was amended previously. Okay. Right. And that's a total of one six one hundred and sixty eight thousand seven hundred and seventeen dollars for those three. So again, the chimney, steeple, and the door. That's these, the these figures, these, yeah, I just want to say that these figures are very arbitrary and they are naive to think that restoration of a chim of a uh, steeple can go on without staging. Who's going to pay for the staging? This, this we have to no, this, that there, there are all these contingencies. There are all these contingencies. If there's no staging, there could nobody can get on the chimney to repair it. And who's going to pay for the staging? No, are you suggesting that we fund it for a million dollars? Sorry? Are you going to make a suggestion that we fund it for a million dollars? Not for a million, but six or seven hundred thousand dollars would be parsimonious in my view. Mm. Uh, 
parsimonious. I mean, we have the funding. We do not have a lot of other projects in the pipeline. We have to go out and solicit projects from people. We have the funding. This is a very important building historically. They have put uh, months and months of work into this project. They've come back again and again. We've asked for resubmissions and we're still not clear about it. Um, I, I'm, I'm frankly embarrassed to be on this committee if, if we fund this pro worthwhile project for $160,000. When we have a $4 million budget, a $4 million budget and no other projects in the pipeline. Who says we have a $4 million budget? Well, or $3 million. I thought that was said in the last yeah. meeting. Gina, we were right, talking Gina. About right, time out, time out. I, Gina, I, I have asked. the numbers handy here. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, okay. So I, the most recent numbers that I have are from May, um, but I excluded the 350000 that the memorial building that you funded for that project. So right. there's 355,000 about in the historic preservation category. There's 700,000 in the special purpose uh, line item. And there's 419,000 in the undesignated, which a total of it is, hold on, I have this summed up, is 1.475 million. But didn't our fiscal year begin July one, and we got another uh, we got another infusion of money? July yes, we don't have that number right now in front of us. Well, William, I I have to I have to say, like, I mean, you know, we have to look at the big picture here too, and I I understand where you're coming from. I I, I understand it, but at the same time, we need to be very remin We need to be careful of, of things in the future that we're not going to be drained for something that's that's as uh, as contentious as, as, as funding a church, right. you know, I, I mean, this, this is, this is, uh, we're kind of, we're tiptoeing around the tulips and we need to be specific. I mean, and I understand where you're coming from, but at the same time, we can't be draining our entire budget on, on one church so they can get a shiny roof. And frankly, I mean, I thought churches could, could fund their own, you know, if, if everyone pitched in, in the church, they can kind of fund their own thing. You know, I mean, I, like I said earlier, I think a lot of churches would love for us to give them 168,000 plus to do renovations, you know, free, you know, free of charge. But like I said, in, in my view, the only thing that's really going for it is the historical aspect of this, of that's this application. And, I think you're, I'm going to say your comment was a little bit disingenuous to the work that the church has put into this. Well, I mean, they, this Gale report is, is extensive, extensive. And they started this process two years ago. I guess that's irrelevant, though. I no, want to no. go back to Anna. Did we, didn't we uh, receive additional funding for the fiscal year in July 1, on July 1? Is that when our fiscal year begins? Yes, the fiscal year begins on July 1, um, so, and there's a new budget. We probably don't know that, that amount. We don't know that amount. Mm -hmm. It will be. Yeah. What it is in, our? It usual? increased the dollars. It increased the um, the historic preservation account by seventy four thousand, if I recall correctly, and I think it was another two or three hundred in the other undesignated thousand. So we don't have that much money. We only have available around one point six to one point eight million dollars. And we, need to the, we need to look for the long, the long haul with this. We can't just be draining our budget, you know, because of the, the, the low hanging fruit that's in front of our face. You know, I mean, we right. need to be healthy and, you know, we need to, we need to, we need to gatekeep this, our balance sheet. I mean, the, the, the chimney, the steeple and the door seem very reasonable to me. And it, it, it completes the project. It puts the baby to bed. And I, I feel like 168,000 plus is, is a comfortable number. I don't know how anyone else feels about it. But I, I, I agree with Kevin. Um, and I'm just going to add on to that, Kevin. That, and it's something I, I, you people are going to be tired of me saying this. It gets down to that substantial aid as well. 
point two for step two, point two, I guess point two on the three point test to, to fund a religious organization is substantial aid. Um, you can't have substantial aid. Um, and to me, if we went along with Bill Stott for a million dollars or whatever, mm -hmm. to me, that is, that is more than substantial aid. Um, yeah, that's that's way. That's, over that's, the top. You know, this is a an application that, mark my word, is going to be scrutinized um, yeah. by the town council, by us. It could be scrutinized by by yeah. townspeople. Um, yeah. And it may be scrutinized by yep. ten attorneys. <laughs> yes. Um, to quote, um, way back when when we had the. The letter from attorney Rawlins. Um, he stated that the CPC should look to both the amount, I'm sorry, the CPC should look to both the amount of aid provided and the degree to which it aids or assists the church in carrying out its essential function. Um, okay, I thought that was the one I had that was saying. Um, I'll find it. It's here somewhere. The, um, the, but, the, basically, I'm sorry. but basically, but basically, that's what we need to we need to to look at, and that's been my opinion from the start. Um, the I'm so trying to find. I thought I had marked it off. That yeah, um, the Supreme to, Judicial Court, oh. even in the case of the the Acton case, that um, they said obviously the stained glass window was knocked out. But the rest of it, they allowed to go through, and it was forty-nine thousand and five hundred dollars. And they, the Supreme Judicial Court, said that was neither minimal nor insufficient. So we need to look at that too. Um, Getting that. So if I look at that in another way, they basically funded fifty percent of the project that was proposed. Yeah. Okay. I have a question about substantial aid. One last question. Does the substantial aid standard apply just to churches, store, uh, religious uh, buildings, or does it apply to all uh, funding projects? Would that have applied to, say, the academy building, for example? No. Or no. Just, just no. to churches. Anna? Yes, it applies because of the anti aid amendment and the Supreme uh, Court, the SJC uh, case around the Acton um, okay. project. Okay. And the place so to the aid comes into the three-factor test that we've been talking about, and we have. So, in the last meeting, before the last meeting, we, we asked you every CPC member to independently consider whether or not the application passed the three-factor test. Of which, one of the questions is: Does this project, will funding it, substantially aid the religious organization? Okay. And so, Jean is raising the point of the consideration in this discussion around funding to consider the substantially aid part of that. So substantial is the key word. But we determined that the church has one service per week and that it's used for scouts, boy scouts, girl scouts, brownies, cub scouts. It's used for a, an array of civic uh, organizations. It's used more by civic organizations, then it's used once a week for an hour church service. So I don't know. If well, I you, know, you know what, William? I think most churches are like that. Mm -hmm. not, not Catholic churches. They are open every day. They're well, open morning. We're, we're splitting night. hairs with that because it's just most churches do the same thing. You know, with this, that. This is. This, I mean, it's used. Yeah. Oh, it's it's very much used as a. As a right. Use, it's right. it's used a lot, but my church also in Bridgewater uh -huh. has a food food pantry, albeit not as big as the one at the Congregational Church. Yeah. There's Boy Scouts that meet there, there's different groups that meet there too. So, and we're, we're looking at the church, we're not looking at really? the Boy Scouts going in, or the food bank or, or something like that. Um, yeah, those are those are frivolous things that kind of have nothing really, no bearing on on what we're deciding on tonight. 
Yeah, but I was just trying to get to the to the language of the legal uh, opinion about substantial aid for the religious purposes of the of the institution. But that's okay. May does anyone does anyone have any more discussion on the three phases that I proposed for a total of one hundred and sixty-eight thousand seven hundred and seventeen? Those are elements. What was, not what was the amount again? Kevin? Elements, yeah. Yep, so the, the, the total, well, I'll, I'll do a breakdown again, just so everyone is on the same page. So mm -hmm. the chimney, so we'll give $37,267 towards the chimney. For the steeple, we'll give $118,864, again, for the steeple. And then for the door, uh, $12,000. $586. And, and then why those three figures, those three figures is equal to $168,717 in total for those three. And you're keeping them because you don't believe that's um, part of it. And why are you keeping siding out? Because I, I think I think it's too too big of a burden for us to take take on. That's why. Okay. I, 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 I don't I don't I don't think we should do half baked partial funding. I know we can do that, but I think that's I think if we do partial funding, we're we're inviting more scrutiny and in a lot of just nope, just one project, okay, funded, it's specific, it's complete, it's whole. And and the chimney, the steeple and the door are pretty pretty neutral things to, to fund. So in my, in my with with replacing the steeple, which is sided. It is partially sided and we're not covering the rest of the siding. So are we going to have like an old siding or leave that up to them? Yep. If they, if the church members don't like having a old siding and a new siding, then they should, if they feel really passionate about that, they, they should put their money where their mouth is and fund it, frankly, in, in my opinion. I mean, but I, yeah, if, if that happens, then, then so be it. But at least we're doing the steeple for them. You know, I mean, that's the, is, that's the biggest swinger, but yeah. Is there, the, and I saw, I looked at it and I couldn't tell from where it was. Um, the steeple itself is sided. That's not, that's not wood. It's sided. It's just the, the louvers that are the wood, correct? Yeah, the, the siding goes all the way up. Oh, siding goes all the way up to the spire. Like, the, so the, it's 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 siding all the way around the the chimney or the 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 um, clock and the louvers. Okay, okay, thank you. But I think they they listed that as a separate price on their their phases, um, because in my my summary, I actually had questioned that. Um. My suggestion here is is that we stop this element pot and fund a dollar amount that will go towards the steeple only. That way it's clean. We have one project element to monitor. The church has a clear understanding of what we're giving. And when they do their other fundraising and grant applications, which because we need to take the vote, we're holding them up from getting grant money. Whatever we give will go into that as contributing money if the town council votes for it. So my suggestion is that we stop trying to separate everything out and just put money towards their highest priority, the steeple. Mm -hmm. So Carlton, you're just saying for the steeple for one one eighteen eight sixty four only? No, I'm I'm saying that it would be more like uh, round numbers two hundred, and that's far less than the project. It's only one out of two out of uh, one thousand two hundred out of one thousand fifteen hundred uh, ratio. So it's it's a small ratio to the total project cost. It's a small they, ratio, but it's not specific enough for me. It's the steeple as defined. We're, it, it, to, I mean, I'm not under a motion, but I'm just suggesting that it would be only the steeple and it would be as defined in their phase one 
activity that they provided to us some time ago. Mm. And according to that, it's 358,000. All the elements are broken down. There's a, about 15 elements that are defined there. Right. And if the staging's included in that, hopefully they will have acquired more money that the staging could be there in place and they can do the sides or whatever else they need for that. I, 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 I don't know how to handle this completely, but I'm coming up right now with that thought so that we can actually tonight get some number to them. And, it, and as somebody indicated, it doesn't necessarily close the book on what we're gonna give them, but. We, right. I, I understand what you're saying, Carlton, but I don't, I don't think it's wise for us to do, you know, a second or a third round of this. I feel like we should just do one total thing because because when I see the door for 12,000, that's a kind of a, a lower, if we can incorporate that and it's a, it's a low enough number, why wouldn't we incorporate that to, to bundle it all together? I mean- Because the steeple, you know. ha the steeple has some structural problems that need it, it needs to be shored up. Up above uh, where the uh, weather vane is, if you look at the pictures and the, the uh, report that we were given, that ring around there could go any day because it's very much damaged. So there are elements on that part that I think are historically relevant, eligible. And so what I'm suggesting is that a, a, a flat sum of money be given towards the steeple restoration. And did you That's say it. the church is said they're gonna fundraise the rest the, more of the money. So Let's not forget that. Well, they okay. that's after the fact. Oh, okay, Gene. Gene, you had a comment. Yeah, Carlton, did you say two hundred thousand? That's a, that's the number that I threw out just to keep the conversation going and maybe come to some compromise amongst the committee. And that would give them the money for the staging that they need to get up it, to the steeple. It's about. It's uh, 200 out of, what did I say earlier, 350,000, something like that. So, so what is this $118,864? Doesn't that cover the whole thing with the steeple? And it, it, doesn't, it doesn't cover um, staging, permitting, things uh, like that. What they consider to be I believe it's for materials and labor for the steeple. There are other cost elements that are listed down under this miscellaneous. Am I correct, Church? Yes. yes. I don't think we should touch miscellaneous myself to incorporate that. And the miscellaneous doesn't cover. It's not specific enough. We need to be specific, no? Right. And that doesn't. In include cost, uh, materials and labor, correct? I, it's 60, take away 220. It's not cost suggestion. Oh, yeah. His costs that he's suggesting are the church's submitted costs for those three elements summed together. Yes. That's all they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I can't see it. Hold it closer. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, okay, fine. And, that, and we get that. We understand what you put down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, and looking, so I'm just looking at... Is this an... Um, I'm looking at the... Um, two, one at a time. Right, 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 Bill, wait, 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 Okay, so um, up to $200,000, and that would include staging, permitting, I'll have materials to look. And okay, I, and what else? you're saying just for the state staple, not the chimney. Yeah, is, is that what that I, would be? I believe for the it would, I would. I believe that 200000 would cover the clearly el eligible costs uh, and. Uh, Another seventy thousand, roughly, towards the questionable eligible costs of the steeple only. That includes then um, questionable costs, bonds and insurance, questionable costs, police details, 
demolition of asphalt roof shingles. I think that goes out. I don't know that that should be in the steeple under this consideration. Uh, that probably should move over to roof. I don't uh, think we can even fund that though, Carlton, like for police detail. And that's not the, the, the point that that's right. But they will have to make a decision underneath all of those things as to what they're going to tell us they're using our money for. I, don't, I, 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 I agree, Carlton, but I think we need to be specific when it goes to the... Um, we need to be extra specific when it goes to the council. Uh, right. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to submit the spreadsheet that I developed that has annotated the costs that I personally believe that are eligible under phase one, the ones that are questionable under phase one, or the steeple, and those that are not eligible under the steeple. I'm happy to submit that as part of the direction that we, uh, recommendation that we give to the. Uh, I don't um, think submitting it would, would do any difference because we can submit things all, all day, but it's, it's not, how do I say this? Uh, it's not like, it, we just, we just, the count, I think the town council just wants a list and says, okay, X, Y, Z. Yes, I misspoke. I misspoke. I will send the list for the steeple. If we were to go in this direction, I would send the list of what I consider eligible to our assistant on the phone here, and then she would develop the recommendation wording going forward based on that. And we may have to look at what further as to what we would not consider eligible. <laughs> Otherwise, otherwise, we're going to freaking be here for all night trying to discuss this. I think we already passed that point. But it, when you say that we're in phase after phase one, are you, does that mean that we're implying that there's going to be a phase two and phase three with this too? That's and, up to and, the right. They're welcome to come come back to us for for more money later. Yeah. See, I shouldn't. I, I don't think it should even get to that point. I think we should just vote on it tonight and. Well, they're looking for 1.5 million. So I don't feel well. I, and, I don't yeah, think they're, gonna, they're not going to get 1.5 million. Right. I don't, and, you know, not getting my vote for it. The amendment, no. the amendment that's so on the floor is for $168,000, 716 dollars for materials and labor. Uh, labor based on the church's recommendation for steeple, chimney, and doors. Correct. That's what's on the table right now. And Let's okay. put it down. And Carlton, yes. your, your figures are taken from the estimates that we were given in that detailed spreadsheet from Gale Associates, right? Right, and it had all three phases. When we, the second, first time we asked for something, they phased it out. Right. So we had a phase breakout, and I used that one for my thinking. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, we, we all didn't have availability to it. Yeah, I'm sure that the town council and the other people who's, who will be scrutinizing the allocation will want to see uh, the estimates from Gale. As, as, as will the Historic District uh, Commission. Yeah, well, we're never concerned too much about money, but we have no money to give anybody. So, <laughs> so let's, do this. let's do this. Can we, Can we vote on this? <laughs> I will vote. I will vote on it, but I will vote no. Because I think we have to continue this after the, all of you get to see the detailed spreadsheet that I put together and better understand what I did. And if you don't concur, happily battle with me. And I don't. Th I think we're talking apples and oranges here, and I do believe we need to do one project element and partially fund that. I disagree. I, I think we should do the three and vote on it tonight and get get the get the wheel moving. That's fine. Tonight. I'm going to call the question, which means we must take a vote now. No more discussion. We're we're voted we're voting to call the question, right? First. I think we probably should because uh, I have to go look at my cheat sheet to see if a question has to be uh, I'm sure it does. Yeah. Of course Jennifer does. Burke, are you still with us? No, she's been off for a while. <laughs> no, she, she okay. off. Uh, <laughs> so let's vote on the question. There's no discussion of the question. 
Just a roll call vote on the question's been called. Can we just repeat the motion just so everyone's on no. the same page? The no, he's, he's, we're, we're voting right now on just like oh, basically we're voting ending, on the ending discussion on the and amendment. to vote for the question. We're voting on the amendment and Correct. then we have to vote the main menu, main motion. Yes. Do we, do we need to vote on yeah, we don't need to vote on calling the question, correct? We do, we do. What we're going to do is vote the, my calling the question. We're going to take a roll call vote, thumbs up or thumbs down to that. Okay. If that goes forward, then we take a vote on the amendment that okay. Kevin put okay. forward. That's what I thought. I just wanted to clarify. Whatever happens. Someone okay. needs to second the uh Carlton's uh, calling of the question. I, I, sec I second the motion. Okay. Well, Kevin. it's 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 not really a motion. It's just to call the. Uh, you call the question and it's done. All negotiations, all discussions stop and you take the vote. Okay, so we're voting on calling the question. You guys ready? Yep. Gina? No. Carlton? Yes. Dean? Um, yes. Kevin? Yes. Steve? Yes. Harry? Yes. Bill? Yes. Okay. Next, we have to do the, now we're going to do the roll call for the amendment. No, the roll call was for the question. Right. Right, but he's saying no, now we're, we're, we're going to I don't know what the vote was. There was 68, one name. Okay, then then it, the question has been called and now we vote on the amendment. Okay, Gina? Mm -mm. I wish maybe could be an answer. Um, <laughs> come on, Gina, come on. We got it. What? No. Carlton? No. Gene? And the amendment it, that we're talking about is Kevin's amendment. Correct. Right. No. Kevin? Yes. Steve? No. Harry? No. Bill? No. It was declined, and that was uh, six nay, one yay. Thank you. We can now vote on the main menu that Harry put forward. And I, it's under discussion. No, we, right. I will be voting against it because I think we need to do it differently. Okay, we had an amendment to Harry's. I made an amendment. We already did that. We already covered that. But if we amended Harry's motion right, so and we, we defeated the amended we motion, and Harry's, Harry's we're out. going to vote on the uh, motion that Harry made as amended. We voted that down. We did not vote that down. Actually, we didn't. We voted it 6-0. Add those two words. Uh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Sorry. So now right. for the, so, look, the motion that's on the floor is now, as Harry's, it's $130,000 for, I think he said three elements, and it was for labor and, uh, Material. Labor and materials only for those three elements. Did you want me to Josh, read Josh, could you just read the amendment? Yeah, uh, or yeah. the motion? Yeah, so why don't I start with the original motion and then uh, do the amendment? Yeah, that'd be great. So, Harry Bailey motion to recommend funding for the steeple roof and chimney. Amended motion. Can not hear you? Motion to amend the 130000 to to the cost of materials and labor and not the soft costs. Okay. Okay. Did you want me to do the vote? Oh, All right. Yeah. Can I do a maybe again? Um, 
We gotta make a sure. we gotta make a decision. I uh, I I know. Um, we can't be postponing this any longer. And then oh, I know. Everything. I I know, Kevin. Um, yeah. One hundred and thirty. Uh, I would say no. Carlton. No. 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 Steve. No. Harry. I made the motion, yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. It was not passed. I would like to move that we continue this discussion at the next regularly scheduled meeting. I'm sorry about this, folks, but I think we need to get more details underneath these elements. And therefore, <laughs> I'm, I would move to continue discussions at the next meeting, a final vote expected. And I apologize it is taking so much time here, but it's a really complicated project. It is. I, sec really I second, is. second that motion. Okay, Steve, that was second, okay. second. Okay, discussion on the motion? Yes, the I, complication the complication comes from it being the church, being a lot of money, being a historical building in our town. Yeah. Okay, are you asking that as a question, Jean? Are you no, making just for a discussion. statement that, that's why? Oh. That those are all the complications that I see. Yes, you're absolutely yeah. right. No, we want to Me do too. something. I, I think we need to be decisive and, and make a decision on this and live with it and, and, and be done with it tonight. So I, I didn't I, have a second to the motion, so I'll offer a different one. I move that we fund the church. Hey, you Gordon? Just a suggestion. So but we have a motion on the floor that's been seconded, don't we? Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, Gordon. Just a suggestion as far as the, the motion goes along that it, it might be amended to uh, take uh, uh, Carlton's suggestion that you uh, just bid on the, the steeple, but using the prices that we got from the our architect. I mean, everyone has a different price here, and that's very confusing, but we got, mm -hmm. we got a lot of money to get prices from an architect. We would hope you would use those. And uh, if you just deducted the uh, the soft costs and the contingencies fees and what what's left, uh, you can you could uh, award that to us. Uh, but that's just a suggestion. What's what's the number? What's the number that you have for that? Well, well that would that would come. How about the numbers? Oh, the bottom line here is exactly. If I take it out, uh, it's four hundred and two thousand two hundred eighty-five dollars. That's what I get in the spreadsheet too. Yeah, that's on that's on the spreadsheet here that yeah. was provided. You know. So, mm -hmm. so I, I didn't know we were under motion. So okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna withdraw my second. If we want to go back to that. So I, you're, I you're withdrawing your second to continue discussion at the next until ne yes. Okay, and I will withdraw the motion. I will now move that we fund two hundred thousand dollar. Well, are we are we at this point that we want to get our dollars for for sure, or we want to move it forward? Do we want to continue the discussion, or just vote on a number tonight? I I personally well, vote voting on a number like blindly. To, to, yeah. and I I really. Hate to see it go on to the next meeting. Um, I would like to see, and I've seen it, but I would like for for everybody to see um, what Calton's suggesting that he thinks are um, eligible components to it, and what he thinks aren't. Um, so, so I would, as okay. much as I. As much as I hate to see the discussion be continued, I would rather set a set dollar. I mean, if somebody motions four hundred and seventy thousand, you you know where my vote's going to be on that. Um, 
I would like to come up with, and I know we can't come up with an exact cost to the, the penny. It's just too many variables. But for all the reasons that Jean cited, um, I think we, because of all those elements, I think we should just continue discussion. Just, just out of curiosity. Jean, Sorry, Kevin, go ahead. Well, Jean, just, just, uh, Kevin, just out of curiosity, what, what, what's, what's, what's the, what was the, what was the biggie with, with my proposal with the breakdown? What's, what was the big holdup with, with everyone thinking that that was, that was bad that you voted no for that? My opinion is it was too complicated. That's why I propose that we do a single element at a certain cost. It's easier for the CPC to go in and inspect as we needed to do and say, yes, they did the structural repairs. Yes, they fixed the cupola. Because, okay, so you're saying because we need to follow through and validate it? That's required under Mass General Law. Okay, well, that's, 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 that's valid. But who actually does that work? Isn't it the building inspector? Surely it's not members of this committee. We have to check by Mass General Law, we have to keep complete records on what was done to include visiting the project site and ensuring that our money was spent as proposed. Well, Carlton, if, if that's the if that's the big hiccup that we're we're what is the follow through and that we need to validate that, what what's so what's so difficult to validate a door and a chimney being done along with the steeple? If it, if it's, no, I'm not gonna continue the argument. Right. If it's Kevin, I I agree and at the risk of sounding foolish, I can't even remember how I voted on your amendment. Um, you voted Josh no, but it's okay. Josh I, I, could probably fill us in. Um, it's okay. You voted no. It's it's all right. I, I can did I vote no? <laughs> I, I can't remember. It was it was six to one or something. Yeah, oh, I was the only one who um, voted for it, but based okay. on all of the input that we just received, I move we fund the steeple restoration for $200,000 against the total cost. The details to be provided to this committee next meeting. So, okay. Can second. I make a recommendation just when in the discussion piece of that? There's I no think along with what Carlton is saying. Sure. Um, so I was gonna suggest that regardless of how you vote, I think you should also just review and vote on the town council recommendation. And as part of that, I can include um, the elements based on Carlton's list or what the and what the detailed breakdown is so that you can then see what elements are being considered as eligible and not eligible. If that's you the put, hiccup in terms of voting tonight. You put words in my mouth and I think that's a proper solution. If we vote this to, rec to more in the state or recommend it to the council, 200,000, at least the church knows what we're willing to contribute at this point. That lets yeah. them put in, but it's up to the town council. They may kibosh the whole thing. Yeah. I like that idea. So next meeting we can vote on the details. Yeah. But tonight they needed a dollar amount. And we promised them that. So my motion is on the floor. I second that move. Steve. Can we hear the motion again? Josh. Josh, can we hear the motion again, please? Good motion. Uh, oh, say something? Yes, could you read the motion again, please? Yeah. So Carlton Hunt motion to fund the steeple restoration for $200,000 against the total cost with the details to be provided by the next meeting. Total cost of the steeple restoration? 200,000 towards the total cost. Would you like me to add to this of the steeple restoration? Please. And they're eligible to come back for more funding requests and a new application yep. at another yep. time. Bill, regardless, you cannot tell them that they cannot send in another application. So I think that's also just a mis just a misunderstanding. So if they if you approve a certain amount now, the church can still 
apply again, no matter, you can't prevent them from applying again, but yeah, okay. you can then say, no, I don't want to fund you for more money, but you can, yeah. by funding them now, you can't say, okay, you cannot fund any other projects. That's not it be, how the CPC works. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Just to clarify. Anna, can you, I was just trying to find a quick in my emails. Can you throw up that, um, the price sheet that for the three phases? Do you still have that handy? Yeah, Josh has a, I send it to Josh. My, my computer's overheating, so if I switch to my phone, I'm <laughs> trying to limit, limit everything. Okay, Josh, can you put that up again? And maybe scroll to the, scroll to the bottom. While you're doing that, Gordon did say that they sheets are two, 402,000 and change. That's what their sheet calls for. And I'm suggesting 50% of that. Right. But I thought he said that didn't include the soft costs. So that's why I'm just. Jeff, can you just go down to the bottom? Yeah. Yeah, all the way. So phase one here, if you see it, is uh, the total project cost, 522 for phase one, which is the steeple. Without the soft cost, it's 460 and change. But if you just look at the subtotal cost of all recommended repairs, it's a little over 300,000. Okay. So if we, if we, I'm just trying to screenshot that. Um, okay, if we um, if we look at the fifty percent count, you throwing that out as that's that was based on my numbers. Thousand, uh, you're, you're throwing out to to do fifty percent. Uh, that's my number against eligible cost. My eligible cost number is lower than the five hundred thousand that's shown here. Okay, and I I. I think mine was too, because um, I thought I questioned some of the, the items on it. Mm. I don't know if we question the same items or not, but I had questioned some. Um, so based on this, we're doing, uh, if that cost were realized, 500,000, and we're doing uh, 200, that's two fifths of the cost. I think we can argue that that's not substantial support. If we if we do a partial and then it's not complete, you know they just got to come back and we, they just say, oh, no, 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 get the rest. Gonna, I, will, I will not 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 say that because they have indicated repeatedly they are fundraising and they are going after grants and our hold up of getting two hundred thousand dollars in this night vote is one of the things that's holding them up from getting grants. So they may I come back. They're, if they're getting I'll enough do. money from their their constituency, maybe why do they need to even? Um. um I'm just I going get to, I'm, Kevin, I'm just going to address that for the church. Um, they have, and I'm not by any means considering putting this as a consideration in my, my vote or my decision, but just to, to speak for the, the church, and they can correct me if I'm wrong, but they have a very small parishioner base. Um, it's not like you're looking at one of the Catholic churches that has hundreds of, of families. Right. Your, smaller, yep. your smaller churches do not have the uh, parishioners. The like cash flow is very low through. compared to, right, I get it. Right, and you, yep, have to look at, you have to look at two. And again, this is playing no part in my decision, but just a thought for the churches is, well, as I said, it's a, a small congregation. Um, right. And so I, I, have, I have friends that are, that are very prominent in that church, and I, I've, I've been in it many times. I know what it's all about. And, you know, I, I don't understand this argument that if they, if there's, if they get so much fun, if they're getting their constituency to, to fund 250000 out of a, so 500000 total, and then we give them 250000 or 200000 and they can come up with another 300,000. That's, that seems, I mean, that's not really our problem. I'm, I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm not trying to, you know, I, I'm just saying that as the, as the numbers don't, don't lie and it's not adding up for me and it doesn't make any sense. I, 
I think we're making this more complicated. G Gina, um, because it's Carlson, mo yeah, because Carlson motioned uh, this and I seconded it. Mm -hmm. Can we vote? Can we can we vote on this? Yep. You, you want to move the question? question. Yeah. You can call the question. I want to call the question. Um, okay. To roll call to to call the question. Yep. Gina. Yes. Carlton. Yes. Dean. Yes. Kevin. No. Steve. Yes. Harry. Yes. Bill. Yes. Yes. This past six yay one nay. Okay, vote on the Carlton's motion. Gina? Josh, can you reread that just so we we have it? Carlton Hunt motion to fund the steeple restoration for two hundred thousand dollars against the total cost, with the details to be provided by the next meeting. Okay, roll call. Gina. Yes. Carlton. Yes. Dean. Yes. Kevin. No. Steve. Yes. Harry. Yes. Bill. Uh, oh, uh, yes. Was passed six yay, one nay, one nay. Okay, so we will. We just to, to clarify, and I know uh, the reason we did this special meeting was to, to get into the town council for their next meeting. But should what would be the, the proper procedure? Do we send it in and just say that we're going to identify costs? Because what if the town council doesn't no, agree no, with Gina, what? Gina, the motion said that I would we would use the spreadsheet that I developed to try to identify the cost, and Anna would put those into a table. I, okay, I, that, 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 that was in part of that was in part of the motion that that Josh so. just read. Okay, I stand corrected. The idea was that Anna put forward was next meeting we vote on the elements that we're funding. They have the two the two thousand isn't going to change, but at the next meeting we have a, a table developed with Anna. Okay. We know okay. And and then we would vote on the exact elements that we're funding. Okay. Carlson, I thought you said the two hundred thousand was for the steeple part, right? For phase That's one. That's correct. That's correct. And I'm going to bring. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my suggestion was that in putting together the, that you all review the, the regret recommendation that's going to town council and it will include the items that you said would the money could be used for and you can review that piece using the guidance from what you all submitted in terms of eligibility. I'm glad somebody's got their head awake still. Okay, say, say, say that again, Anna, because my head's not. <laughs> That's too convoluted for me. But, uh, okay, yeah, say so, that again. yeah, so the, in the, at the next meeting, the, you'll review and vote on the town council recommendation to send that. So we've, ne we've now instituted a policy where the, the, after a project is recommended and voted on by the CPC, a written recommendation to go along to go to town council with the stipulations around the vote, including um, the amount and what uh, pieces of that of the project are eligible for that funding to be used for. So, as instead of spending time now talking about what specific elements are and are not eligible, especially since we all don't have the same materials in front of us having you all look at the recommendation letter before it goes to town council and approve it with those stipulations broken out in terms of these elements are able to be funded with that $200,000 based on the spreadsheet that the CSCC sent to us. Okay, so we're, sense, everyone? so we're and identifying that where, go ahead, Jean. Oh, in that way, what we put forth, hopefully town council will not, will accept it. 
if we put I think, it they, I think they're going to be yeah. ridiculously confused by it, to tell you the truth. That, that's the ho that is the hope, that, that we provide sufficient details that they would go through and say, yes, we agree. They said it was eligible. We think it is. We voted. Oh, but by the way, we only want to spend them to spend 150000 They can come back with that recommendation, but that's the idea. And I think it's really important what Anna said. She's going to develop the draft transmittal recommendation to the town council that we will then review in advance of the meeting and vote on that that's exactly what we want next meeting. Okay, so we're not, okay, we're not getting it to the council for the, or their next meeting. Yes, their next yeah, meeting. You know, I don't think we're there yet. Right, the, that, the, I'm, the I'm just clarifying because that was, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that, Anna. Um, I, I was just I, clarifying I, because the purpose for this meeting tonight, so just, I, I guess just to, just to be clear yeah. that we're going to work out the, the finer details. They don't meet until September, and I think our meeting is the 26th, and I have to think about it, whether it's by noon. I, we, we can submit an article to them in advance as a placeholder, I think, and then, then we can provide the details. What they're going to do is simply refer it to two committees. Right. So in other words, we have, we're delaying this another month until they meet in September, at the end of September. And then when it gets approved, they won't even, they probably won't even start building because it's going to be winter time by that time, right? Or late. We're not authorizing building. We're authorizing the amount of money to be held for the church. That's all we're doing. We're recommending that the town council will do the appropriation. Well, when's that going to be in effect? Do you, I mean, just. It's in effect when the town council approves it. Church would it's too late for me. The church would invoice us when they actively get the project going. They write the check. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there, a time limit? Is there a time limit when we give them a check to when they need to start? We no. don't give them a check. They reimburse you. The money is reimbursed after they spend it. So. Um, the, I guess, the, so once you send this, the recommendation to town council and they vote to either approve it or not approve it, mm -hmm. they, that money is then appropriated and set aside in a fund that says we are reserving $200,000 for you to spend for these purposes related to the steeple. Whenever the church decides to fund, to use that, to, you know, go ahead and they have enough money and they're going to start work on the steeple because they need, they're probably going to need to do more fundraising in order to fund, actually do the project that they're applying for. They'll start work on it and say, here, we spent this amount of money this month to, pay, to do X, Y, Z of what we said we would do. And then we, they get reimbursed for that funding. We don't just give them the $200,000. They spend the money and they say, this is, we did spend it in the way that you wanted us to spend it. Can you reimburse us? And you reimburse them. Mm -hmm. And okay, I just so it's, so it's spent, just it's spent in on piecemeal. That, it's spent in piecemeal. What, it's kind of okay. Why are we? Crazy. But Kevin, we we never do that. We never give a cap point. A cap point. But you know, why are we reimbursing them and not just paying the bills as they come in? If they say these are the are materials for the louvers, why yeah, don't that's we just, the same. That's the, that's the same thing. It's, oh, okay. You're not, I guess the, what I want to clarify is you're not just giving them carte blanche and saying here's. Two hundred thousand dollars to sit to do it how we want it you to do it. You're saying here you are going to spend it this way, and you have, you give them the money after you say yes. That's how we use. That's a, that's okay to spend it that way. Right. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that we're not um, they're not paying up front, and we're reimbursing them because that could just if they don't have the two hundred thousand up front, then if but in, we're just going to pay the bills as they come in. If they're invoicing us, they have incurred the cost. Right, right. Just reimburse right. Them. But we we'd be we'd be paying, say, Sergeant Lumber. Our Sergeant Lumber's been out of business for years. But you know, I'm, actually, actually well, I'm, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask that we uh, close out this conversation because the committee needs to know that we've been working with Jennifer Burke and Anna to develop a process memo that describes absolutely each step of what we do. So it will become very clear, and we will probably bring that to you at the next meeting for a vote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. And, 
that so, sounds so great. I asked yeah. you before a little bit on the details of how we process the invoice and the town and process it because we're trying to get a document that actually explains it so anybody in the future knows how it happens. Mm -hmm. that, that's correct. And Calton, the reason I brought it up was just to term reimburse because I didn't want the church to think that they had to come up with that $200,000 first, that it's not reimbursable, that we will pay the bills. So that's that kind be, of what you're saying, and it's part yeah, of the that process. Will be, that will be written into the conditions that right. we submit to the town council. Right. I just said it tonight to clarify for the church. That was why. Um, <laughs> Gordon, you have a question? Oh, no, I just understood what you said. Thank you for clarifying. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want you to think that you had to come up hey, with the extra 200000 like, immediately. Okay, so <laughs> I, I think I got this right. Okay, so the council, I'd have to look at the dates, but we thought they met next week. So no, they meet they every meet two September. weeks. They meet when? I believe the next meeting. Let me check. The next meeting, I believe, is September. Okay, mm -hmm. oh, that's what I'm thinking. You know what? I'm thinking that next week, next week, thinking that we're in our regular meeting at the end of the month. Okay, so they're meeting, I think, the first week in September. It they're probably not meeting is the first, it's probably the first week and probably the first Tuesday. Right. They're not meeting so, at all in August? They've already met. Right, they meet hey, every two weeks. Don't quote me, don't quote me. Let me look it up. I just have to find a way to get, you, you, you may be right. I mean, it may be the 26th. Uh, I thought they the were month. meeting at the, later on this month in August. They met last week. It was a special meeting. Oh, I'm, okay. wrong. I'm wrong. I've been that, that, that way before. Okay. Uh, uh, gosh, I was hoping, okay. September eighth. I'm, I'm done. September eighth. <laughs> we were all hoping, Kevin. Yeah. We were. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's well, a little, well, little too convoluted well, for me, but uh, that's all I got to say. I don't know. Okay. Well, Calton's looking that up. Does Barbara Gordon, um, Rachel, Terry, anybody have any questions or comments or? Okay. Um, I mean, I, I just, I don't think, I, I think 200,000 is, is my personal limit for what we give the church, but that's just me, just to throw it out, just to throw that out mm -hmm. there, because I don't, I don't know, that's just, any more than no, that, I think, I, we're, I think it's too much. Yeah, I, I voted for it because we can I can talk about that if we ever get another application. I, yeah. I will say, just one comment, uh, you talk about members. We, we have approximately 140 members, of which normally we might have 60 might show up at church when there's no virus. So I, we don't have that big a congregation, though. I want you to be aware of that. I am. I am aware of that. Yes. That's right. Um. Gina, can you tell me if I'm muted or unmuted? This is better. You're, un you're can... unmuted because I can oh, hear you. Oh, you can hear me. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Um, I want to talk, what about the deed restriction? I hate, I, I don't want to really go through that right now if the town council is not going to approve this. So, be, and that takes three, around three months to do the deed restriction. And that'll cost us anywhere between three and $5,000 to start that process. So what do you suggest, the CPC suggests that I do about that? Um, Anna, can you, I'm going to defer to Anna for that, who's, who's probably way up, more up on deep restrictions than I am. Barbara, I would wait, um, to do the deed restriction in part because I just, based on the amount of money that, um, you all put in with the budget, it sounds like you also need to be do, do more, um, fundraising before you actually start the project. So I think you have some time to be able to be doing both the work for the deed restriction after the town council votes on the recommendation um, and also doing uh, fund additional fundraising in order to fund the rest of the, to close the gap between what the CBC is uh, recommended to town council and what is needed to do the project based on the budget that you submitted. Okay, um, 
So this is only phase one that you're submitting to the town council for 200,000. And we still have phase two and phase three of the project. So we have to resubmit our application for phase two and then resubmit it again for phase three. I would suggest okay. if you're gonna do it that way, Gina, I'm sorry. I would suggest you do it that way if you're gonna come back for more money. Okay. Oh my goodness. Uh -huh. Yeah, Barbara, my point was to the amount, the phase one number that you submitted in the, that you submitted in the budget was much, it was more than 200,000. So I guess my point was even just to do phase one, additional funding sources will need to be found either through like a capital campaign with the church um, or by put, submitting grant um, applications to other sources to, in order to fund the rest of phase one. Okay, I got that. Okay, I think there were, I have some eight papers here. I thought I had, had jotted it down. It was, fingers crossed, if your, your, all your grant applications go through, um, it was in a substantial amount. I'm not sure if they have to be for specific things, like if you can put, put in and say like specifically for the steeple or if it just where I'm not sure how the applications work, but it seems to me, I remember I totaled them up and it was a substantial amount. So that would be a, a good help for you. Well, I don't know if those grants still exist. We have to search for new grants now. Oh, okay. Yeah, there, are some, there are some grants out there, maybe a little bit more in the future and there may be some rolling application deadlines. I'm sorry, but this is the, the town, needed to and we needed to really dot all of our eyes uh, as best we could uh, just so you all know town council is on the calendar for september 8th there is a finance committee meeting on august 25th there's no town council meeting posted for that date so it's i know that we can make the september 8th deadlines mm -hmm. and i think Gina and Anna, I think in our submission, we're going to request that they not uh, send it to committees for review because that'll add another two weeks to it. But we can okay. talk about that in executive sessions or, or in an okay. session. Do they um, count and just for, I'm not really up on the town council meetings. Can they send things, vote on it directly without sending it to committees? There's one thing in the Constitution or, or, that we put that may override me. I think it says anything with money needs to go to the Finance Committee. They do, yes, have, the right, they do have the right to not send stuff to the finance, those committees, but I think because there's a dollar amount here, uh, I think we're locked into a, a committee review. Okay. Okay, yeah, thank so they, you. They, they, they could entertain it on the August 25th financial meeting. No, that's well, the they thing. Well, can't because we're not sending it to them until after. It has to go to the town council from us. The town manager puts it in front of the council. The council then decides what committees it's going to be referred to, if any. If it's referred to a committee, they generally are trying to meet re regularly. Uh, and it's probably only the, it's going to be two committees, the fin finance committee and the town council's finance committee. And they usually meet at least before the uh, two weeks of before, uh, meet before the next town council meeting. So if you take the uh, September 8th, they would refer it on September, whatever 8 plus 14 is, 22nd, they would. Uh, oh, it's 14 days to revert it back. 14 days, 14 days, and then they would bring it back up and vote it if the committees voted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's ho let's hope everything gets completed by the end of 20 before 20 2021. Let's let's hope that also. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Okay, so the next I, I, for the church is the town council. So come out and support it strongly on whatever date they put it on their agenda. <laughs> right. Okay. And we're looking at ideally We'll just well we'll decide at the next meeting. Uh, basically, for lack of a better term, the checklist that we want or uh, say to apply the funds to. Um, 
I see no problem in getting it to them by the, I think it's the Friday before or the Thursday before that they want it. So I still see no problem getting it to them, to the town council in time to put it onto their agenda. Like Houghton said, we can always send a, um, like hold a spot for, you know, with sending this. Um, so that's where we stand. Um, if there's no more discussion, I just want to thank everybody for their three and a half hours of time. Um, thank you for <laughs> tell me looking at a clock like, Damn. oh my god. Yeah, I'm surprised that no, I'm surprised nobody made, made came up to the decision when I joined the call after about an hour and a half in. Well, I'll have you, I'll have you guys know I am sitting up in New Hampshire in the Lakes region, and this is how I'm spending my first night. Oh. But but I don't mind it. Thank God I'm up here by myself for tonight. Otherwise, people would say, can you go in the other room and, like, check everything off? But I want to... Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Well, yeah. I, I just first want to thank everybody for their time. That's it. Just yeah. thank you for your time and all the hard work. You know, CPC people and our... Um, and the church people. Thank you so much. It's, it's appreciated. And we will get to... Unfortunately, we need a second to the motion and a roll call vote according to our I'll rule. Make oh, Carl, it's, okay. it's okay. Okay, roll call, Josh, to adjourn. Uh, who seconded that? Jean. 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 Jean says okay. yes. Carlton? <laughs> Jean? Yes. Kevin? Yep. Steve? Yes. Bill? Bill? Yes. Looks like uh, Harry is no longer with us, so... Did I get you? Oh, yeah, he, he phased out. Yep. Did I get you? Thank you, Gene. I appreciate the kind words. Thank you. Uh, thank you to you guys. Have a, have a good night. I'm going to go eat yeah, my no, be safe. All right, good night. Enjoy okay, good night.